Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Uh, but if, 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 if you want to sort of see like a, a, a vision of the future, it's like basically the, the like the top twenty and the, or even the top hundred is like totally dominated by China. <laughs> it's really? Yeah, this is like China and a little bit of Korea and Taiwan. So you in, are you in the top twenty in the world? Or yeah. Top twenty? Wow, in Diablo. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to tell everybody your handle? No, uh, no, don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them. It's not worth it. Well, it, I, I, they, they they actually listed me with my actual name in the in the list. Oh, did they really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, but um, yeah, there's only there's only two Americans in the top twenty. Uh, the, well, re- the rest, o- almost everyone is a, uh, from Asia. Uh, otherwise, we were talking about something that I think is a really good because people always think that video games are frivolous. But wh- what you were saying, I think that's really important. Is it, it? It's so difficult that it requires you to only think about that, and it can like relieve stress. Yeah, it can take out the rest of the world because it's so hard. Yeah, you can only think about that. Yeah, I mean, if I, like, if I play a video game on extreme difficulty, then um, I have to concentrate fully on the game, um, and it, it's, it has a calming effect. Yeah. Uh, it sort of, sort of chills down. Um, and, uh, I mean, you mentioned, I think, and many people, like, if you play martial arts or you play yes. pool, uh, yes. like, something that, that forces you, it, it's like, I think any, anything that forces you to concentrate fully um, actually has a, has a calming effect. I find it just sort of like... Um, Kind of a, a mental a restoring effect. Mentally. Yeah, it's like it's good. Jujitsu is um, like that. Yeah. Uh, archery is like that as well. Yeah. Like when you're shooting a, a bow, you have to. It's, there's so many moving things, yeah. and you're trying. You have to think only of it, and yeah. it cleans the mind. It cleans the mind. Yeah, exactly. I was watch. I was reading this study about surgeons, yeah. where they found that surgeons who regularly play video games make less errors. Well, it's. It, it, I mean, video games require manual dexterity, so yeah. uh, it makes sense. Completely makes I mean, sense. I, actually, I, if, if somebody was like ever good video games, uh, I'd, tr- I'd say like the, the surgical skills can be very good because in order to be good at video games, any kind of fast reaction video games. Look at this: thirty-two uh, percent fewer errors, twenty-four yeah. percent faster, and scored twenty-six percent better overall than their non-player colleagues. Oh, I believe that for That's, sure. Incredible! Well, like the, that, you should be required in medical school to play video games. <laughs> I, I, Don't if, you think? If, if somebody's like top, a top ranked video game player, and they say they're a surgeon, I'd be like plus plus one, plus two type of thing. Oh, top rank for sure. Well, but because, this but, isn't even top rank. This is just people who play. Well, you, your, your manual dexterity has to be extremely high. Yes. So you're, you're you're looking at things on the screen. You've got, you're reacting, and, and you know, sometimes you got like ten milliseconds to react. Yes. Um, and um, and and so if somebody's got. Uh, incredible reaction times and manual dexterity, they're obviously going to be a good surgeon. Imagine if there was a yeah. course that you could take. That right. course would promote, you would be 26% better. Yeah. Everyone would have to take that course. Sure. Why would you want a surgeon that's less prepared? You would I, say, I, I, hey, Bob, did yeah. you take this course? You didn't take this course. Don't you understand this course makes you 26% better? Sure. You would have to take it. Everyone should have to play video games yeah. if you want to be a surgeon. Well, I think it'd be, it would certainly would be a very good test to see <laughs> if, if somebody can't play video games well. Like that means, I mean, because you got to move both hands simultaneously. Right. You got to react to something very fast, then um, on the screen. So, and and, and if, if your keystrokes or your mouse clicks or whatever are wrong, uh, then you lose the game. Uh, right. So, if somebody's like has a good rank in video games, I would say that their manual de- necessarily their manual dexterity must be very extremely good. Well, it's so the fine hard. motor skills have to be excellent. If you think about like StarCraft or any any game like Quake, any game where a lot of people are yeah. playing, to rise to the top, you have to be exceptional. Period. As yeah. a human being, yeah. there has to be something exceptional about you. Yeah, it, I, actually, <laughs> for mentioned Quake way way back in the day, I was one of the world's best Quake players. <laughs> I know we talked about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I loved Quake. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, my final semester in college, I probably put more time into Quake than all my college classes. When I was uh, on news radio, all of the writers were super nerds. They yeah. were very, very fun guys. And they had a LAN set up at the studio where they yeah. all played Quake. I had never played video games. Yeah. And I would go in with the writers and just kind of hang out with them. We'd get silly. And then we would, would all start playing video games and p- playing Quake against yeah, each yeah. other. And I got a Addicted, yeah. like hardcore. Like I got hardcore. a T one line installed in my house. <laughs> yeah. I went hardcore. Yeah, exactly. You're checking how many milliseconds of latency. Oh you have yeah, and, I was yeah. I was fully addicted. I was making my own computers. I yeah, was yeah. G- going to Fry's Hardware and buying motherboards yeah. and putting everything together. And you know, it was too much of a time suck. Though yeah. I'm an obsessive person. I can't get involved. Like I can't yeah. play golf. 
No, it's too, golf is too slow for me. I mean, I know a lot of people find golf good, and I mean, I guess if you think of it like it's, I guess if you're saying you're going to walk outdoors with friends yes. and occasionally hit a ball, then and and you just and as an outdoor walk, then that's cool. Um, and it does require concentration when you're hitting the ball, but it, it's. It's it's a it's it's too slow for me. Nothing but, compares to video games in terms of like the amount of feedback you get, like yeah. the, the 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 sensory overload you get when you're looking yeah. at a large high resolution screen. You have a fast computer. Yes. You have headphones on. <laughs> that you're hearing <laughs> yes. sounds from here and sounds behind you, and rockets are flying by you. And yeah, it's there's nothing like that. Yeah, but I think golf still is like Jamie will tell you. Jamie's an addict. He's a golf nut. It's super addictive, and it I, takes I know, like yes. eight hours a day. It, it's yes. Uh, once, once you get into golf, I think I guess any sport it, it gets super addictive. Um, so, but but for me, the the the, uh, the, inten- the intensity of video games is uh, hard to beat. Yes, it's and the people dismiss it because they think it's just a waste of time. But we're showing like real world benefits of so people playing video games. Yeah. If you want to be a drone operator, it's the only game in town. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You have to really good at video games. Yeah. Um, for sure. So um in fact, I, I can actually tell uh, like what my me- mental acuity is uh, if I just play if I play a very hard video game. So if I'm trying to sort of get like a, a an extremely good clear time in Diablo or something like that. Um or, or any, you know, a first-person shooter, whatever the case may be. Like, if I, I can tell that I'm tired, uh, or my, my brain's not working as well as it should, it's it's like a it's like a mental calibration. You can tell immediately, mm. like, what is what what how, how good is your mental state? Right, <laughs> right. Um, and uh, you know, so it's like like if you're if you're trying to play really well, like I just, if you play late at night and you're tired, you just play badly. Right, and you can say, okay. You you may th- you may think that your brain is working well, but it isn't. Because yeah. You, can write, you play the video game and you're like you suck. So okay. Yeah, you're putting it under stress. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're really stress testing it. You stress test it and yeah. Because uh, like sometimes like oh I think I think I'm fine, but then you play the game like okay I'm not I'm like, I'm, I'm like ten percent below what I should be. That's how I feel about workouts for yeah. sure. Like that's how I knew I had COVID or I knew uh, everyone in my family had COVID you and I was weaker. trying you- to not get COVID and so I was working out. I was like something's up. Like, I felt fine normally, but right. then during exercise, I was like, okay, I can tell there's something wrong here. So let's just like back off, relax. Yeah. Yeah. It's like people who don't stress test their mind, they right. think they're operating on the same level all the time. Like, sometimes yeah. I come in here and I can't form a fucking sentence <laughs> and I don't know what it is. It's sure. like, what is going on? Yeah. So it's just like, like sleep's not, maybe yeah. it's like what well, sleep wasn't that good or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Or I'm too busy and it's just, it's not, the words aren't coming out. Like I know how to yeah. talk. I talk professionally and I can't fucking <laughs> talk. <laughs> it's like, I mean, sleep's hu- is, is, is massive. I mean, huge. Like, yeah. So uh, if, if I can tell immediately, like, did I get a good night's sleep or not? If I, if I just play like a uh, video game for like five minutes. I, yeah, I'm like okay, my sleep wasn't that good um, because it's my my, you know, and then sometimes they don't. Little, your brain will recover through the day, and it's like okay, like an hour or two after waking up, it's better. Yeah, because uh, your brain does kind of recover from bad nights of sleep, a little bit. Do you know what it really helps? Creatine, apparently. Does it? Yeah, creatine is actually a nootropic. Believe it or not, there's a lot of like benefits okay. of creatine it's, that I are mean, really is, weird. Are there any downsides? No, no, so it's well a it. natural part of food. Yeah, yeah, especially women. For okay. for women, apparently, especially postmenopausal women, it's very beneficial. Okay, and uh, it, 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 there's but there's a lot of like cognitive benefits, and one of the big ones that they found recently is performance when sleep deprived. Huh. Mental okay. performance when sleep deprived impre- increases pretty measurably when you supplement with creatine. Is creatine naturally occurring in like steak or? Yeah, it's like naturally occurring in meat. I think. I think that's where it's coming from. I think it's a pr- primarily an animal-based thing. Yeah, yeah but like I, I did switch to like steak and eggs for breakfast, and I found that's like a power up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're all overrun with carbohydrates. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you do, like carbohydrates make this big crash, the rise and the yeah, crash, yeah, totally. the rise and the crash. Yeah. You stay flat if you eat like a, a primarily high protein, high fat diet. Yeah, your body runs off ketosis essentially. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I so I just have like steak and eggs, no no bread or, or anything. Yeah. And, it's great. Uh, it's great, actually. It's a power-up, I'd say. People dismiss this whole carnivore diet thing because in our heads, there's yeah. a lot of propagandists that put this thing out there that 
animal agriculture is the number one contributor to global warming. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rubbish. It's bullshit. not true. Bullshit. It's yeah, hot yeah. bullshit. It doesn't matter. Not only is it hot bullshit, Irrelevant. but the real problem is factory farming. Regenerative farming is carbon neutral if it doesn't sequester carbon. The, the, the animals are not going to make any difference to global warming. They can none. Zero. No, it's zero. horseshit. Zero, 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 nothing. Do you think that that's just propaganda because of people that have a vested interest in like plant-based meat products and things along those lines, green energy? I think it's part of it. Um, you know, the, it, it, you're only going to get people pushing to avoid meat. Like some people just, you know, um, yeah, maybe they've got a financial interest. Maybe they're just like vegetarians or vegans or whatever. Um, ideological interest. Ideological reasons. Um, but uh, it's not going to make any difference uh, to global warming or you know the CO two concentration in the atmosphere really um, if if people eat fewer uh, steaks it doesn't matter it's irrelevant irrelevant I want to just be super clear about that yeah it will not matter you will not even be able to measure it okay that's how irrelevant it is isn't it funny that that's unmeasurable her- that's irrelevant a her- heretic speaking <laughs> like that's crazy talk now nowadays it's like you have to say that we have to eat less meat no that meat we, is bad we totally eat, uh, as much meat as you want it's not going to make a difference sing it. Saying it. Tell yes. the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if somebody says it does make a difference, I'm like, how will you measure it? And if you can't even measure it, then it's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, I won't be able to measure it. Well, there's so <laughs> much bullshit out today. First of all, yeah, it's bullshit thank, in all directions. thank you so much for buying Twitter. <laughs> You're thank welcome. you so much. You're welcome. I'm not exaggerating when I think you changed the course of history. I really do. I really think you you made a fork in the road. We were headed down a path of censorship and yeah. of control of narratives that is unprecedented. Forget about what they were able to do back when they had newspapers and the media under control. What they were doing with social media by suppressing information and when you had a combined government effort, like what they were doing with the laptop story. We have 51 former intelligence agents saying that this is Russian disinformation. Take it offline. And Twitter complied. Yeah. If, we, if you didn't buy that, we wouldn't have known that. We had no yep. idea. Exactly. Uh, no, it's – I mean, the, the, the reason I bought it was because I, I'm in a pretty attuned um, since I, I was like the most interacted with a uh, user on Twitter before the acquisition. So before the acquisition, I had more interactions than, than – like there's some accounts like Obama and whatever had higher follow accounts. Uh, but uh, I had the most number of interactions of, of any account in the system. So um, I was very attuned to like – if if they start change if they change the system, I can tell immediately. Like and, and I'm like I'm like something weird is going on here. You know like yeah. So th- there's like I I just got increasingly uneasy. Um, and obviously when when they deplatformed a sitting president, you know don't de- 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 deplatform Trump. Uh, that was that was just insane. Um, you know um, and 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 the things he was posting like he was posting things that that like he, he was posting good things. He was saying like hey do we don't do not riot don't don't to do any destruction of property you know please stay calm that, that's the kind of stuff yeah. he's posting yeah and you're like uh what's wrong with that that's and, and then then, then the, some people say like oh that's like some sort of dog whistle he means the opposite i'm like okay so we'll give you trump's account now you you post what you think you should post because you can post nothing you can ask people to calm down like what it was insane like it didn't make any sense well, it's completely illogical when you say it's dog whistling to tell his followers to not be violent. That's yes. crazy. And crazy. That's crazy. Crazy. They, don't you think they'll listen to him? Yeah. Isn't that the whole point? They listened to him and created violence in the first place? That's what you think. That's yes, what you're, exactly. That's what you're accusing him of. Right. And then there's the fact that we know that there was agents in the crowd that were agent provocateurs that were encouraging yeah. people to do illegal shit. Yes. We know that for a fact. This yes. is not... That it was always the big Alex Jones type tinfoil right. hat conspiracy theory because Alex proposed that back at the World Trade Organization protests. We, <clears throat> I believe we're in Seattle in the 90s. And they sent in agent provocateurs, started smashing things, lighting things on yep. fire. Now all of a sudden a peaceful protest is no longer peaceful. Right. They move in the cops. They shut everything down. They had it set up where it was a no protest zone where you couldn't even have a pin that yeah. had the WTO with a red line through it. They wouldn't let you go in through to go to work. So you couldn't protest. You couldn't exercise your First Amendment rights. Yep. You couldn't even like have a peaceful protest, a fucking sticker on your car. You couldn't right. have that. It's crazy. It is crazy. So no, I think we're we we're very much at a fork in the road in uh, destiny, um, and um, you know, for, 
so, so it, I, I mean, the reason I yeah, did the Twitter acquisition was like, it's like, man, if, if I don't do this, I think we're screwed is the issue. Well, if you it, didn't it, do it, no one else was going to do it because it yeah. wasn't a financial winner. It, it was kind of a crazy move. It's a crazy move. I mean, the, the thing was way overpriced. Um, and, um, you know, like long, long term, I think uh, we can we can ultimately make it a win for investors. But boy, this is a, this is a, a this is a hard way to make a living. Well, there's also thing. a concerted effort to suppress it. There's a concerted effort well, to, yeah. with the advertisers. Well, we had, we, we had a and still have a, um, a massive advertiser boycott that was organized by a bunch of left wing NGOs. Like uh, you know, and and you, you always want, and I should have brought, I should have brought my. Uh, I have a hat. Make Orwell fiction again. <laughs> I've seen that hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I should have brought. I was going to wear my. I, I should have brought my Make Orwell fiction hat again. Um, but but uh, yeah, I mean it's just totally totally nuts. Um, so if you didn't do it, no one would have. And here's the hilarious narrative that I keep hearing from idiots. Uh, Elon's a bad businessman. Twitter is worth, you know, 400% less than when he bought it. No, it wasn't worth that in the first place. It wasn't worth that in the first place. It wasn't worth $44 billion, you fucking morons. Yes. Like, wrong. And also, you're not taking into account the advertiser boycott. Exactly. That's total bullshit. Yeah, ex exactly. So, th there are these organizations, like, you can tell there's, like, they're, they're like, like, when they have an Orwellian name. So, like, the, like the Cent Center for Countering Digital Hate right. is, is a total scam organization. <laughs> You know, because they're like the Ministry of Truth type yeah. of thing in, in, in Orwell. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're like, they're, they're a censorship organization. Yeah. Um, and they organize, and, and they pushed uh, the advertisers to boycott. Uh, so we still have, like some of the boycott is, is, is starting to lift. Um, and uh, I think if Trump wins, we'll, we'll see, you know, probably a lot, most, most of the boycott lift. Um, but if, if Kamala wins, we'll see that boycott get stronger. Uh, and and they'll, they'll friggin' shut down. There's no way that that uh, the sort of Kamala, Kamala puppet regime would allow X to exist. You really think that they'll be able to shut it down, though? Is yes. there a pathway to that? Uh, yes. What would they do? Um, well, I mean, they can just they can stick the DOJ on, on, you know, and say like, you know, they've had this whole thing about like hate speech, misinformation, whatever. Except that they're, they're the ones pushing the misinformation. Uh, but that doesn't stop them from filing massive, you know, lawsuits and, and using the DOJ. I mean, like, the DOJ has, uh, uh, you know, been attacking SpaceX, for example, for not hiring asylum seekers, even though it is legal for SpaceX to hire anyone who is not a, a permanent resident of the U.S. So uh, we, we're, we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. This is an example, just an example of what DOJ can do. So it's illegal to hire someone who's not an American citizen? Um, for, for, what SpaceX uh, is considered an, an advanced weapons technology, so it's it's covered by international traffic and arms regulations because we, we make rocket technology that can be used against the United States. So, like if North North Korea or Iran got SpaceX rocket technology, they could use that to launch nukes at America. Right. That would be bad. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be really bad. <laughs> that'd be really bad. So, so we're, we're uh, since we are in like the most extreme category of weapons technology at SpaceX um, under. Uh, U.S. ITAR law, it is uh, illegal for us to hire anyone who's not a permanent resident because the presumption um, is that if they're not a permanent resident, they're going to return to their uh, home country and take the rocket technology with them. So that's and so so it's illegal for us to hire um, anyone who's not a, either has not a permanent. They can they can be have a green card or be a citizen. They just have to be a permanent resident of the United States. Um, then there's another law that says if you if you discriminate against asylum seekers. That's also you're also breaking the law. So they they just they, so they the DOJ which not, the DOJ, DOJ can only do a small number of big lawsuits every year. They launched a giant lawsuit against SpaceX, uh, saying that SpaceX uh, discriminated against asylum seekers, and we're like, but we're like, but it's illegal for us to hire anyone who's not a permanent resident. So we're in this like this is what I mean. It's like Orwell the Orwell situation is getting insane, like. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. So you're damned. Can you imagine history looking back Fucked up, man. at when you watch the robot arms catch the rocket, and you realize like this is like one of the greatest accomplishments in the cool. history of aerospace. Like It is one of the most wildest accomplishments. Yeah. When you watch that thing come, and you see all those people cheering, and it catches it perfectly, like, holy shit. Imagine how history is going to look back at the DOJ going after that company. Yeah.
How and, insane and it, was a it is. Big lawsuit with a, an army of lawyers. Like this was not like some minor thing. But it doesn't even make any sense doesn't logically. Make any sense. Like how could it even get brought to court if I, it's that's illegal? What, that, that's exactly. So that, that's what I mean. Like like like, basically, if the government wants to go after you, they'll just find a reason. You know, it's like that famous quote um, from Beria. You know, like so like Stalin's like chief torturer, the head of Stalin's secret police, and he's like chief chief torturer, truly evil human being, like this guy Beria. Uh, he, his, his one of his famous quotes was, "Show me the man, and I'll show you the crime." Right. They just, they just, they, they like, they decide that you're the target, and then they figure out the crime afterwards. That's the issue. They yeah. decided SpaceX was the target. They just figured out the crime afterwards. Which is so crazy because that's exactly what they're saying Trump is going to do if he gets into office. They're doing all the things that they accuse Trump of doing. Yeah. Openly. Openly. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the sheer number of hoaxes that the Democratic Party is pushing over and over again. They, and, and it's like, look, I understand like politicians are going to, you know, exaggerate. They're going to misspeak. And I, they'll tell occasional, you know, untruths, whatever. That's, that's how it is in politics. But when you have deliberate, concerted, repeated pushing of hoaxes, you're like, wait a second! Like, come on, man! This is too. This is too far. And you're supposed to be the good guys. You're supposed to, and you claim to be the good guys. I'm like, exactly. You're the, supposed to be the progressives. Yes, the Dems are like, oh, we're the good guys. We're the honest people. No, no, ha hang on. You can't claim to be the good guys. You can't claim to be the honest people if you're deliberately post pushing hoaxes that have been debunked thoroughly. Yeah. Well, we're, not we're, just we're like even Snopes, which is a liberal thing, yeah. says it's bogus. Yeah. Like the fine people hoax. Uh -huh. Obama just said that on Obama stage. Obama just said that. I was like, what the flying fuck? He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck. They're just, they're That's just a flat going out for goddamn it. fucking lie. Flat out lie. Flat out fucking How lie. How about the other one where Kamala's campaign used what Trump was saying about protecting women and uh, from illegal immigrants? Thank you. You remember that? The, he, yeah. What he was saying is, the, the, if the women like it or not, I'm going to do it. Yeah. When he was saying that, they were trying to say that he was taking away women's right to choose yes. whether women like it or not. Like, that's not what he was saying. Absolutely. He was literally talking about protecting them from dangerous people that are sneaking in through the border. Yes, exactly. They'll take, like, like not even a full sentence, like a half a sentence from Trump. Yes. And then, and then they'll push it on, on every ad, every, you know, Every speaking event, every and it gets media. repeated on the news. Yes, this is what's crazy. They'll talk about it on these news shows, it's quote a, news shows. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I mean, a recent one that that came up, um, which had a lot of people, because I, it, a lot of people re reached out to me, was like, they're, they're like, oh, Trump says he wants to execute Liz Cheney. I'm like, <sighs> that is utter bullshit. What it's not what he said at all. It's not what he said at all. He, he all he said was like, is like, what he's saying is that look, if if Liz Cheney. Uh, um, actually had to fight at the front lines should think twice about going to war. Exactly. That, like it's easy, to go, it's easy to go to war. It's easy to be a warmonger if you don't have to, you know, risk dying at the front lines. Like if other, like basically it's fucked up if, if people are having like fancy dinners in Washington, D.C. Um, while people are being slaughtered in trenches. You know, it's like you're not feeling the pain. Exactly. You're not taking the risk. It's someone else dying. Exactly. That, that's like it's, that's that's cruel and lacking in empathy. Um, and and all Trump was saying was that it's like Liz Cheney would be much Liz Cheney would be much less of a warmonger because she's a huge warmonger, just like her dad. Um, if uh, she actually ha had to go to the front lines and fight herself. And meanwhile, they're saying that he should. He's saying she should be shot. Yes, which is a total lie. And but I had like tons of people call me this weekend yeah. saying, oh. Trump says he's going to put Liz Cheney in a firing squad. I'm like, that is an outrageous lie. And yeah. legacy media ra ran with that lie, big time. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's just wild to see. And if it wasn't for Twitter or X now, I don't think we would know about all this stuff. I, th yeah. I think it would be very difficult for you. I think YouTube throttled. They did something weird. They won't say what they did, but they did something weird with the Trump interview that I did. Yeah. Where you couldn't find it. It doesn't make sense. Like, like, uh, <laughs> made no sense. I mean, it's like the it was like the biggest interview on earth. Yeah, and you can't find it. Yeah, not only that, it I'm wasn't like, trending. Bullshit. It wasn't trending. It wasn't trending. No, it wasn't trending. <laughs> You're like, like, there's just no excuse for that, man. No excuse. There's no excuse. It was getting a million views. One point. What was it? One point four an hour at one point in time. One point five an hour. Yeah. And it wasn't trending. Yeah, like, and, and it's like it's like, it's like your channel is a known channel. It's not it's not like you, it was started yesterday. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like 
this is a high trust. Yours is a high trust channel. It's like, like you're not trying to s- s- sell scam crypto coins or something, you know. Um, so well, thank God we put it on X as well. Yeah, yeah. Because I think just with your account and my account alone, it's like seventy million views. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's like you can't hide things anymore because of you. And if it wasn't for you, I think they would have had total control of social media by now. Yeah. They that's would have thro- they they banned so many accounts during the pandemic. So many dissenting scientists and doctors and physicians. They banned so many yeah. conspiracy theorists, so many people that colored outside the lines. They would have done that everywhere, and it, it probably would have. I think even at what's going on at Facebook, they're they're being more lenient. You know, you hear Zuckerberg right. talking about taking a more libertarian stance. That's entirely reaction to the way Twitter yeah. has kind of moved the watermark. Exactly. So, um, as soon as as soon as any company steps out of line and is willing to actually have the truth debated on their platform, it forces the other platforms to, to allow things to be more truthful to. to to not censor, because th- their censorship becomes ex- glaringly obvious. Yes. Um, yes. And you know the, the the best thing I found for as a rebuttal, like if somebody if there's a hoax, is just go to the source material. You know, right. if if you think if somebody think, thinks, uh, you know, it's, it's, oh, uh, you know, Trump said that that we should put Liz Cheney in a firing squad. I'm like, let let, let me send you a link to X so you can watch his video. That's the best way. Yes. It's, 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 don't don't take my opinion for it. Don't take anyone's opinion for it. Go to the source material. And community notes. Yes, and community notes community is Community notes awesome. is the best. It's awesome. It's incredible. Yeah. Because everybody gets checked. Yes, er, including me. Yeah. Um, and with community notes, the all the software is open source, and all the data is open source. So you can recreate any given note independently. That's amazing. Yeah. That's how, it's be, that's how it's it should be. It's total, absolute transparency yeah. in, in every way. Um, you know, sometimes I get I get asked like, "Oh, Elon, can you remove a note?" Uh, you know, mostly by the left, but <laughs> sometimes by the right. I'm like, I'm like, I don't even remove remove notes on my own account. Nothing. And 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 by the way, everything is totally open. So if I did that, it would st- stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. Like, it's not going to be subtle. That is the best counter to misinformation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, let everybody look at it and say, okay, here's what the actual facts say. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The, the counter to misinformation is better information. Not just that, but having it checked in real time by the community. Yeah. So you yes. have millions of people that can go over it and debate whether or not this is true or that's true. Yes. And, and just, uh, and like I said, like the, the best way to understand the truth of things is don't take anyone's opinion for it. Look at the source material. You know, so yeah. it's like, look at what someone actually said. Look at what someone actually did. Look at the real videos of the situation. And, and then you can actually, you'll know what's real. So as of today, when you were a, a literally on your way here, you sent me this text saying that they're trying to lock you up in jail in yeah. Pennsylvania. Tell me yeah. what the fuck is happening. Well, you know, there's the classic sort of Soros DA situation. Um, so we're, we're making a lot of progress in Pennsylvania. So, uh, you know, I've been, been I've, I've given a, a whole bunch of talks in, uh, throughout the, the, the state because Pennsylvania is the linchpin in this election. You know, whoever wins Pennsylvania wins the election. So, um, so I've been giving talks. And I spent three years in Pennsylvania. I went to college in, in Philadelphia. So, um, so it's not like I'm not a total, I'm not like a total stranger to the state. You know, I spent three years there. Um, and, um, and, and, and we, you know, we, 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 we've organized this, uh, petition in support of the constitution, um, which I think is a good thing. Um, and, and specifically asking people to, uh, and, and, and we wanted this to be like, um, registered voters in swing states. Like basically we want to send a message to the politicians to say that the people care about the constitution because there've been all these attacks on the constitution. They've been especially on the Democrat side, they've been repeatedly saying that that the that the first amendment is an obstacle. Cuz and, and they're claiming, "Oh, the first amendment is 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 enabling disin, disinformation, misinformation." And I'm like, "Yo, there's a reason for the first amendment. Like freedom of speech, the reason they the, the founders of the country put you know, the freedom of speech there is because they came from countries where if, if you spoke your mind, you would get shot or imprisoned. That's why the First Amendment exists. And the Second Amendment is there to stop the tyranny of government. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, is there to protect freedom of speech. Um, you know, um, You know, and I've had these debates, especially with people in L.A., because they're, they're, they're like, want to take everyone's guns away. And I'm like, yo, can you guarantee me that the government, that we will never have a 
a tyrannical government in the United States. Can you can you make that guarantee? But like, well, nobody can make that guarantee. I'm like, then we need to keep our guns because that's the that's what's going to stop it. That sounds crazy for people to hear because they think about gun violence and yeah. gun problems and gun this and gun that. But that's the reality of the world that we live in is that tyranny is possible and it exists other places and it's slowly existing. It's slowly rearing its head in the UK. You're, you're yeah. seeing, I, I think the, the number of people that have been arrested for just social media uh, posts is bananas. It's in the thousands. Yes. Several thousand people have been, have been given prison sentences, sentences in the UK for social media posts that where there was no explicit link to actual violence, but they just said it, it encouraged violence. I'm like, well, did anyone actually do anything as a result of that media post? Uh, well, no, but they, they're just it, and and then they have a prison overcrowding situation in the UK, so they quite literally are releasing convicted pedophiles and putting people in jail for Facebook posts. That's an actual thing happening in Britain. That is so wild. Like it's you're like it's what, so wild that people can't see what the fuck you know is going on. And what's insane to me make is make Orwell that, fiction again. Yeah, you know. But it's all being encouraged by the left. Katanji Brown Absolutely. Jackson, John Kerry, yeah. uh, John Hillary Kerry, John Clinton. Kerry was one of the people who said that he's on camera rec like a few weeks ago, saying that the First Amendment is a pro is an obstacle to fighting misinformation. Yeah, it's crazy. It's such a crazy thing to say when you have a solution. In community notes, yes, you have a solution exactly. in something like that that could clear everything up, any confusion yes. within a day or two. And, and and even without a community note, you can reply to a post and with, with evidence that 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 shows that the post is wrong. You don't yes. even need community notes. I mean, community notes is helpful because it sticks to the original note. Yes. But in the replies, you can say, "Here's why you're wrong. Here are the reasons, and here's the evidence." But the argument is that people are too unsophisticated; that they're not going to research these things. They're going to be a victim of misinformation. So they're going to read something. It's incorrect. They're going to run with it. People are going to die. People are going to, we're going to ruin the world because people believed in misinformation. It's a stupid argument. It's a stupid argument. Because it's an argument that they're too dumb to know what's right or wrong. Well, yes. you, if you know, because you're saying it's misinformation, why do you think yeah. that you're smarter than everybody who reads that? Exactly. Uh, and, and obviously anyone on, on the X system uh, knows that th things are posted and then there are replies and there are rebuttals and it's immediately corrected. But where are the corrections for the legacy media? Right. You know, when... when if um, you know some broadcast media, pop, they 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 say, say, say false things all the time, but it's a one-way street. There's no rebuttal. There's right. no counter. Right. You right. Know? There's the, who, who's apologized for being incorrect about what? Did Rachel Maddow ever apologize for telling everybody that if you get the COVID vaccine, you're never going to get COVID? It won't. The virus right. stops with you. No, never. Never. Yeah. No one ever. It's just. It was not true at the time. There was no evidence to support it at the time. It's pure propaganda. And she said it. The Russia Gate hoax. The exactly. for three fucking years they yes. said that he was Putin's toy. Yes. And that Putin had him compromised. The yes. Steele dossier. Steele dossier was completely fabricated yeah. by uh, a lawyer at Perkins Coy, um, who, uh, who was paid by the Clinton campaign. Literally. Crazy. And still people think the Russia hoax is real. And there's no repercussions. Yes. There's no one had to apologize. Hillary Clinton never came out and apologized for that. And people yeah. still listen to her. The whole thing is crazy. Yeah. And it's all coming from the left, which growing up as a, a person who was in the left my whole life, it doesn't yeah, make same. any fucking sense. Same. I mean, I, 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 I even I, I, I was on the left until like three years ago. <laughs> like, I, I mean, you know. It's not the I, left I, anymore. It's not the left anymore. Yeah. It's it just like I think we obviously want – I mean, I, I I believe like we want freedom, like like we want we want to maximize pers personal liberty. Uh, I think we want we want to be kind to people. You know, we want to have empathy, uh, and um, but but it's very important to have personal freedom and a merit based society. And the left is is wants to oppress your freedoms, especially freedom of speech, um, and they want to they want to have a non merit based society. You know, with race-based and sex-based preferences, and it's like, well, wait a second. No, we we just want people to succeed based on their skills and their hard work. And if they don't want people to express themselves about particular issues, then they're not doing the will of the people. And if they're trying to suppress yes. people's ability to communicate, they're only doing that because they want to do things that people don't want them to do. Yeah, and they want to silence opposition. That's all it is. And the 100%. fact that people can't see that and they want to call Trump a fascist. 
Well, it's, the whole thing is the whole just, it's just through I, the looking glass. It's just I, I mean, it's like one hoax after another that, that they're perpetrating against Trump. I mean, like they try to call the, the rally at Madison Square Garden like a Nazi rally. I'm like, yo, there was like literally an Israeli flag in the audience. Um, I think like a quarter of the speakers were Jewish. Like there was like there were people of every race, color, creed, religion at that at that rally. Like, tell me what about that is Nazi? No, and, and, and yet it was portrayed as a Nazi rally. And well, still... MSNBC, they, they literally showed video of the Nazi rally from the yeah. 1930s and then compared it to the Trump rally. Now, ignoring the fact that fucking Jimmy Carter spoke there. There have been dozens of political yeah. rallies at Madison Square Garden. Dozens uh, on the on the Democrat side. Like people, and people on X were like, "And here's exactly here's Jimmy Carter, and here's at know, a Nazi Bill rally, Clinton, yeah. and here's <laughs> wait a second. Actually, it looks like uh, every presidential candidate has done a uh, on the Democrat side has done a rally at Madison Square Gardens. Are they Nazis too? But what they're um, doing is they're preying on low information voters who aren't engaged actively on social media, who don't have the time yes, to look the, through everything. And, exactly. Yeah, like if people are living. If, if people are just on looking at legacy mainstream media, then they have a totally different worldview than if they're on X uh, and and seeing the the actual flow of argument. Yes, and the actual evidence. Well, what was the pushback? Like, what happened when you guys released the Twitter files? Because I think the Twitter files is probably one of the most important things in this age of information for understanding the influence that government has on social media and and on discourse. Because when, when we found out that that was the case, that the government was actually asking Twitter to remove posts that were factual, yeah, the they, did, they did the same thing to Facebook. They had them throttle mm -hmm. pieces of one of Tucker Carlson's show. They, they suppressed the views by 50 percent. Yeah. Of factual information. Yeah, no, there was there was massive government interference in Twitter, um, but but like Twitter welcomed it. it that's important to all, all Twitter welcomed it. Uh, I mean, tw all Twitter was controlled by by far left activists. Yeah. So, uh, and and uh, they they welcomed the government interference. The government they got paid by the government for it. That's crazy. Uh, they yes. got paid for their time, correct? Yeah, they got paid millions of dollars for for suppressing information. So it's like build and, and, time. And a bunch of it was like flat out illegal. Like the F FBI had this like this, this this sort of magic portal into the Twitter system, uh, and and the, but. All of the communication in that in sort of in this portal was auto deleted after two weeks, which breaks federal FOIA laws. So we don't even know what was said because it was all deleted after two weeks. That's insane. Yeah. That's so crazy. It's so crazy that people thought that, that was okay. It's not it's super not okay. No, it's super not okay. It's unconstitutional, and no one would want that. No one would want the government yes. to have that kind of access. Exactly. And what was the blowback like? when all that stuff got released like you had to anticipate that there was going to be problems when you, when you released that like what was what happened well we got a lot of we, we did lose a lot of advertising dollars um and um which is crazy because it's essentially like one of the most important forms of journalism yes. is exposing government corruption yes i, I mean this is the weird, weird thing it's like the left used to be uh big big on exposing government corruption but, now, but once they control the government, they no longer want to expose the government corruption. Right. They want to pretend that the left-wing government's incapable yes. of corruption because yes. we're on the good side. I, I think it may be just like, you know, whoever's in power kind of doesn't want the, you know, the, the other side hurt. Because um, as you pointed out, like the left historically, it, up until, I don't know, maybe even 10 years ago or something like that, um, was the free speech party. And now it's the anti-free speech party, and they just they, they use they use words like, like oh well we have to be against hate speech and misinformation disinformation, but these are propaganda words, you know it's like, uh, well who's defining hate speech who's defining misinformation the government, do you really trust the government to make right. that definition? Um, we should, the whole point of the, <laughs> of the First Amendment is like you do not trust the government. Well, especially when they're wrong, and yes, then there's no lies. repercussions. Yes. Yeah, like with the whole lab leak theory, if you could, you would get kicked off of YouTube if you even presented mm -hmm. this argument that, hey, maybe that coronavirus lab where they're doing work on the exact same virus that got released. Yep. Hey, maybe that's where it came from since that's where yeah. the virus started. What do you think, guys? Yeah. They kick you right off of YouTube. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly. It's like, do you think maybe the... <laughs> It could have come from a place called the Novel Coronavirus 
Research Institute. Yeah, like that hat. John Stewart bit that he did on Colbert. <laughs> yeah. That think, was amazing. Like, what does it say on the door again? Uh, can I see your business card? <laughs> <laughs> and to see Colbert like resisting it with every fiber of his yeah, being. Like, What's going to happen to us? He know? was totally cock blocking the bit to the point where John Stewart got off his chair and yeah. started walking around to try to that was take wild, control. Man. Yeah, well, and, thank, and, good on and, John. And then the left tried to cancel John Stewart. Of course. Yeah. Meanwhile, he was right. He's right. And no apologies. No yeah, apologies. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the whole Fauci thing, like yeah. any criticism of Fauci, it's like uh, anti-science. Fauci's a freaking demon, if you ask me. If you read RFK's book, yeah. if the real Anthony Fauci, if that's correct, if the facts are in there, that's true. It's all referenced. Yeah. You could find the sources, and on top of it, he's never been sued for that book, yeah. which doesn't make any sense. If he exactly. just made a bunch of lies up, he would get sued. Yes. So the guy's a monster. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. 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 I think like just. Looking at the lies that he told, the way he tried he, to he, define gain of function research to Rand Paul, but, but he, he people, I think a lot, of, maybe a lot of people out there don't realize Fauci funded the the the, the bioweapons research that was going on in in Wuhan, and he he bank shot it off. Like he can't send the money directly to China, so he just bank shot it off EcoHealth, right? This this like fake nonprofit in right. the U.S. and they sent it to Wuhan. And Obama put the skids on that. He stopped that in 2014. Yes, I mean, so you know, um, to to give Obama, throw Obama, uh, give Obama some credit. He actually was like looking at this and say, "Hey, this is crazy," and uh, and we we need we, and he so he he actually did uh, stop the, the the like like the the so called gain, gain of function again a propaganda word uh, because what is the function they're talking about death. <laughs> right, okay. right, right. So, if you if you if, it, if if you actually use the right word, this is gain of function is death maximization. Right. Then you're like, oh, oh, you, hey guys, should we fund uh, uh, bioweapon research into death maximization? Because that's what gain of function means. Yeah, it means that's the function making death. a disease so that people can get it. Give it to people. Yeah, what, and oh, what, by the way, just, what's that function again? Oh, the function is death. Oh, okay. So also, just call it a death maximizing virus. If you're That's doing insane. research on that, and the idea behind this research is so that we can cure these things, how come you don't have a fucking cure? <laughs> yeah, start you, with a start with a cure. Cure yeah, first, disease second. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like you guys had no strategy for yeah. dealing with it if it got out. And so you have to like make up this n this new vaccine in like record time, Operation Warp Speed, release yeah. it to the people with very little testing. It's fucking yeah. crazy. It was crazy. The whole thing's crazy, and everybody like just Looney went Tunes, along man. with it. Looney Tunes next level. Well, it's the psyop was fascinating to watch it's, people step in that's line. That's like one of the biggest psyops of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. And everybody got in line. And when you take it back to when pharmaceutical drug companies were able to advertise on media in the 1990s, that changed yeah. everything. We're one of two countries in the whole world that allows this. Yeah. And because of that, because we don't have socialized medicine, it's a complete profit scam. Mm -hmm. And they went hard uh, claiming all all sorts of things that were never researched, all sorts of things that are not supported by data, like the fact that it would stop transmission, the fact that it would stop right. infection, the fact that it was safe for pregnant women, the mm -hmm. fact that it was safe for children, all of it's bullshit. Yes. And they pushed it on the whole world. And if you didn't say that at yes. a cocktail party, you were a pariah. Yes. And you were an anti-vaxxer. It was totally psycho. It was like being a Holocaust denier. You yes. got kicked out of <laughs> polite yeah. society. Exactly. Fucking um, bananas. And, and I should say, like, I'm, I'm actually generally pro-vaccine overall. You know, I think we should look at these things. That, 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 but that, but I, I believe in the scientific method. Yes. So, so you, you, you never blanket accept anything. You never blanket accept that any any given medication or every, any given treatment is 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 100 good. You should always view it with some skepticism. Especially so, when you're getting the data from pharmaceutical drug companies that have like a long history of criminal maybe got a vested interest. conduct. Yes, yeah. they, they, they've got a vested interest in, in the research. It, it's sort of like asking tobacco companies about, you know, whether smoking right. is, is dangerous. You it's know? exactly the same <laughs> I'm thing. Like, oh, according to our scientists, everything's fine. Yeah, they lied in court <laughs> forever. The same yeah. thing they did with OxyContin when yeah. they said that it wasn't addictive. Like, they have a long history of being full of shit if it makes them money. And yes. that's what they do. That's yes. their business. They've literally lost multi billion dollar lawsuits yeah. of, of, in this. Massive. Massive. They're in the. You have amazing scientists, right? You have these clinical researchers, these people that develop these incredible drugs, and they, this is their job. Their job is to figure out some new way to cure something, yeah. some new way to stop things, and then you have the money people. Sure. And the problem is when you have this yep. one thing that 
you would assume they're only doing it to help people. And then they have this other faction that they're all just numbers people. Yep. And all they give a fuck about is maximizing profits yeah. and making sure they literally have a, a, an yeah. obligation to their shareholders. Yeah. They have to make the most amount of money possible. And so they just want to push it on everybody, regard like the Vioxx scandal. There's internal emails showing mm-hmm. they knew there was going to be cardiovascular events. People mm-hmm. were going to get strokes. Yeah. And they're like, I think we're still going to do well. And they did. They made like $12 billion. They got fined seven. And fifty to 60,000 people died. Holy shit. Yeah. One of them was a friend of mine got a stroke. And died. He, yeah, no, he didn't die. Okay. He lived, but he, he was a really healthy guy. But he was he an was athlete. Out the same after his yeah, he had knee problems, and he took Vioxx, and all of a sudden he was slurring his words, and he couldn't concentrate. And people were like, Holy "I shit. think you're having a fucking stroke," and they took him to the hospital. And then, then you have this giant class action lawsuit. And then Vioxx gets pulled from the market, and they get sued, and the whole thing's fucking crazy. But there's a long history of this. I think what did what is the number? Like one third of the drugs that the FDA approves gets pulled. It's Fucking bananas. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're shitty at one third of the things that you say are okay, but yet you're trying to stop MDMA therapy for veterans. (sighs) Yeah, they should let MDMA through. Honestly, that think that actually help a lot of people. It would help a lot of people. Would help a lot of people. There's a lot of different therapies, specifically psilocybin, ibogaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fact you have to go to Mexico to get uh, ibogaine therapy for veterans. So many guys I've talked to have gone over there, and it's like yeah. completely giving them a, a clean slate, yeah, refresh yeah. their mind, and r- totally new perspective on life, alleviated depression, cured addictions. Yeah. Illegal. Yeah. Illegal. Oxycontin, go get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know some people who, like, their, their life was ruined by Oxycontin. You know? Oh, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it, it, it really depends on, on you know, somebody's individual biochemistry. Um, like, to me, like, like um, opioids are not addictive to me. Like, I, you know, I've had them when I've had operations or something, and uh, they, 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 barely, they barely affect the, my pain level, and they make me, like, itchy and uncomfortable. <laughs> they make <laughs> and, me stupid. And the, yeah, the, exactly. But, but I'm like, so, so like... Like I could never get addicted to alcohol or or opioids. It's just impossible. Like because my biochemistry just d- does not have like. No, but I love tasty food. If you like, you know. Yeah. You know, if 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 there's, I'm addicted to tasty food. Sure. Um, but like there's, there's like can be like I have a whole wall of wall of alcohol. It's there for decoration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a dungeon, basically. I feel the same way. I, I could easily quit alcohol. Yeah. I mean. I'll go weeks without having a drink. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. But I know some people, they have one drink and they're off to the races. And exactly. that's the difference in the, the biochemical differences yes. that we all have. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's the case with a, a lot of addictions. I'm not addicted to gambling, but I get it. I yeah. see it. I've seen it in people. But I'm, I'm, I have this aversion to things that I know are going to ruin my life. I, I've, I see it. That's why I've never tried cocaine. I just saw yeah. too many people. that yeah. lo- It looks too fun. I'm like, I don't want to get involved. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think... Generally, for any given uh, drug, uh, legal or illegal, you could. It, it, the question is, can you complete the following sentence? Blank made me a better person. <laughs> <laughs> meth. <laughs> like I've never heard anyone say meth made them a better person or cocaine made them a better person. No. Ever. Um, made a lot of soldiers better. I think. That's, yeah, I mean, if you're doing, yeah. if, if, you, if you're like, if, 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 you need, if your soldiers need to march for three days in a row, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it yeah. does. It's really Myth good is for that. Effective at that, you know. Um, yeah, you know, like people give like uh, France a hard time about you know capitulating in World War Two, but but you know what's what's worse than the Nazis? Nazis on meth. <laughs> meth <of> Nazis. <laughs> they're, they're not stopping. Norman okay. Oler they're, wrote they're like this six book. bullets. They're like they're they're still coming. <laughs> that book over there, Blitzed, is yeah. all about the use of methamphetamines yeah. and the different drugs that they gave their soldiers. Yeah. The guys at the front of the line, they gave the most meth. Yes, they have different dosages. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you just basically think you're vulnerable on meth, and uh, so, so it's one thing. Be, like I said, so one thing be, you know, have have like the uh, be Nazis come after you, but Nazis on meth, you're like, holy shit, those fuckers are not stopping me <laughs> for three days. <laughs> They're not stopping. It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's not a, a statement. Meth made me a better person that you hear very often. I've never heard that before. No, you hear a lot of like psilocybin advocates. You, mm-hmm. you hear a lot of people that talk yes. about psychedelics. I, I, and, exactly. I've, I've actually heard many people say. That uh, LSD or, or you know, mushrooms or uh, MDMA made them a better person. Yeah, many people. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, I think a, a rule for the FDA should be like, hey, look, um, if you can complete the sentence, legal or illegal, that um, blank made you a better person, actually. Yeah. Uh, then 
then you got a good drug. And if you, if you can't, you got a bad drug. Also, if there's drugs that are available right now that can absolutely ruin people's lives, this, the, the rationalization for stopping other drugs that might ruin people's lives but also can help a lot of people's lives, it doesn't make any sense. Right. You're, you're, you're ba it's basically the same thing as censorship. You're taking away people's ability to discern what's true and not true, yes. and you're taking away people's ability to discern what's good for you and not good for you. And the way to find that out is to have as much information as possible. Exactly. So to do research yes. and actually to have unbiased, actual objective observers who are looking at all the stuff that give you real data. Yes. And the opposite of that, or the counter that, is like, if you don't do that, you're empowering cartels. Yes. That's the whole reason why they have all that money. It's because it's illegal to sell these drugs in America. The demand is never going away. So instead of like limiting the amount of drugs, now you've got toxic drugs because fentanyl and all this other yeah. shit has been, because they're not pure. So you're just killing people. You're not saving anybody right. by protecting them from themselves. True. But it's a tricky situation because what do you do? Like if you just like say, okay, now everyone can sell all these people that have been selling boner pills. Now you can sell meth. Like holy <laughs> shit! You, know? <laughs> you get you get the you get the the the, 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 the double combo with, with, with the Viagra. It's right. a Viagra and a meth. Right. <laughs> Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ! Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, I mean, how many people are already doing that right now with no, no, Adderall a bunch of people are doing that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people out there yeah, that are yeah. essentially on meth. Yeah. Especially people that abuse uh, Adderall. Yeah. They're basically amphetamined up all day long. Uh, yeah, Adderall is low grade amphetamine. Yeah. Um. So um. The and like, I, I, I have actually seen people like become much worse people if they take too much Adderall. Like much worse, you know. It's it's like an anger amplifier. So there's yes. um, now now I'm not saying like Adderall is something like where there's there are pluses and minuses. It's not a clear cut issue. Right. Um, it does help some people a great deal. Um, and uh, but but in in higher doses, man, that that stuff I've seen people turn into just raging monsters on on high doses of Adderall. Just. They're the, the, they're just angry, like extremely angry, all the time. Yeah, they're messed up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's what happens if you take meth. It's crazy. You, well, you, you turn it like meth turns you into a friggin' rage demon. And so <laughs> and, and so like, many prescriptions. And I'm like, Jesus. We we googled it. Like you know? one year, there was like 39 million prescriptions for Adderall in this country. Oh yeah, yeah. And, like once in a while, there's like an Adderall shortage, and like there's like watch widespread <laughs> panic, you know. <laughs> and then what do people do? Like, and then it's the same thing as like when they tried to like limit the amount of OxyContin. Well, people go to street heroin. And if you're addicted to Adderall and your dealer, your guy who sells you weed, is like, hey, man, I can get you like like low-grade meth, like the stuff the Nazis took. Like, well, they, they had high-grade meth. Actually, they had pharmaceutical grade. It was, they had epic <laughs> they had epic meth. <laughs> it was like made by the – like pharmaceutical grade meth is going to be – like this, this – the, I mean, there's – I mean, just look at the freaking uh, online Wikipedia page, but there's like many different versions of meth. Like, not all the same, um, and and they have different effects. Um, so, but but like a pharmaceutical grade pure meth, you are going to be, oh my god, super productive, <laughs> super productive for a certain period of time, <laughs> and and you're not going to sleep for a while, and uh, and and then you you will you will have some anger management issues. Um, so like, like uh, they actually the, the the Nazis they did actually um, uh, go, roll back how much meth they were using because they had they had quite a few incidents of of the of the soldiers killing their officers <laughs> because they were on too much meth. <laughs> Jesus Christ! They, they, they would, yeah, so they would shoot. shoot that too many um, officer got fragged by the by the you know. The, the, their platoon that was on too much meth because they <laughs> that happened quite a few times <laughs> like you just when, when someone's on a lot of meth you, they're 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 they're, they're very, they can get very angry did you ever pay attention to when john mcafee was uh cooking meth in a lab in his backyard i mean mcafee's quite a character he was a character character man. we had him on the podcast when he was on the run so he called in from an undisclosed location yeah, yeah. when he was running from, where was he, Costa Rica? Is that where he was? Belize. Belize, yeah. right. So when he was running from the authorities, yeah. he called in. We had him on the podcast on the run. And uh, I was asking him about yeah. these posts like because there was an online account that was linked to him where he had this very detailed laboratory, like super sophisticated, yeah, making yeah. the best meth, like a super genius yeah. cooking meth. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I think he like had he, like he had his lab like he was making like a wide range of drugs, uh, <laughs> and there was like, I I talked to uh, actually a, like a a reporter um, who who went down and like uh, interviewed him in Belize. Um, and and Porter said, "Man, that's one of the scariest things. He's he, like he he was he was quite terrified. So like w- one of the things Evan Caffey had, he had, I guess, this trick where he would he would play Russian roulette with himself. Uh, so so he'd put a bullet in in the revolver, and they'd spin the spin the chamber. And clearly he had like some like trick to you know know that it was not uh, there's some." Uh, you know, way that he knows it's not the right bullet. But, uh, but uh, I do wonder, like, if, if McAfee is high and he does that, he's not always going to get the trick right, you know? Do you um, sure he had a trick? Or maybe yeah, no, just... so, yeah, yeah, so, so, he, so according to this reporter, um, when, when he went to visit McAfee in Belize, uh, McAfee took out the revolver, put, a, put a, a bullet in the revolver, spun the chamber, and then pointed at his head and went click. And the reporter's like saying, please don't do this. Like, this is insane. Click, click, click. And then pointed the gun at the ground, and Nick went click bang and shot, shot a bullet in the ground. Jesus, that's a hell of a party trick. Jesus, <laughs> this is the next level party that's trick. That's the guy who's seen the deer hunter too many times. Yes, remember that scene <laughs> when they were forcing? The... Yes. Yeah. Woo! Well, that's, that's a heavy scene. That's a heavy scene. De Niro and Christopher Walken. That's one of the greatest scenes in any movie ever. I ever. remember watching that scene, just like clawing at my pants, like. Yeah. Oh. Whew. That was McAfee a... was a wild boy. Wild. And you know, created brilliant antivirus software. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He may have made some of the viruses too. <laughs> you think so? Well, it's didn't possible. he like give laptops to a bunch of government organizations with that, viruses on them? With, yeah. yeah, so yeah. that he could they like t- totally pay attention to what them, yeah. they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody whacked that guy. I don't know what happened to him, but I, he would be a guy that would be like, this guy is a little bit too loose. <laughs> and probably had sensitive information. I don't know. Um, For sure he did. Uh, I mean, I, f- I found him to be an interesting guy. I mean, like, like I'm generally f- like f- feel like like if somebody's not harming someone else, they should be okay. Now, now there is some suggestion that McAfee like killed his neighbor in Belize. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> so I mean, probably like, did. Maybe the neighbor was a douchebag. I think he probably did. Seems like he probably did. Seems like the neighbor <laughs> so, killed so then, his dog. Yes. Right, and then it seems like he killed the neighbor. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. I mean. It seems it seems likely. It's not a zero possibility. It's not definitely not zero. It's, it's, <laughs> He's it seems more up. likely than not. He's a messed up wild man playing Russian roulette. Hey, yeah, maybe you kill your fucking neighbor. Yes. I mean, if somebody killed your dog, you'd be really inclined to kill them too. Yeah. If somebody killed your squirrel. Yeah. John really John Wick. Yeah. The fucking squirrel thing is bananas. Yeah. That the, squirrel uh, thing in the New York. Thing, I, I, so here's the thing about the 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 whole squirrel thing is is that. Um, how can it be that we live in America, uh, supposedly land of the free, and the, you know, the, the government can barge into your home with guns, uh, so if you resist, you're going to get shot, um, and then take your your pets and execute them, um, and if they can do that to your pets, what do you think they can do to you? I know that it's not an exaggeration. Absolutely. It sounds so, like you're you're oh that's so crazy. How can you make that connection? But it's that's no, it's why a, it's would a, you kill a, that cute little squirrel that was obviously a pet and trained from the time it was a baby? Yes. If you see the interaction that guy has with that squirrel, it was wonderful. It was really cute. Yes, absolutely. There, there's it, it was just obviously a, it was a beloved pet pet squirrel um, and a raccoon too, um, and doing no harm, um, and the the, the government. Comes in, barges into the guy's house, takes his pets, and kills them. And you know, I, I think this should this should really get people out there mobilized, frankly, because um, you know, we think you see that like the John Wick movie, where John Wick's like, you know, he 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 wants to, he just wants peace, like you know, in, in the in the John Wick movie, he just wants to, he's like, listen, I want to retire, and they offer him like tons of money, like to because they want him to be an assassin, to keep being an assassin, and, like they, they're like. They they like offer him tons of money. They threaten him. He's like, listen, I'm not gonna be. I'm 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 out. You know. And they kill his dog. Well, that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was a they really a cute little puppy. And the puppy was his uh, ex wife's gift to him when she died of cancer. Yeah. Great movie. Great movie. The best revenge movie of all yeah. time. Because it's so ridiculous. He kills everybody. Yeah, he kills everyone. Um, <laughs> and you're rooting for him. Yeah. 
They shouldn't have killed his dog. <laughs> yeah, they fucked up. And yeah. they shouldn't have killed that squirrel. They shouldn't have killed that fucking... That, that squirrel... I mean, it's like, how many how many cases have we not heard about, you know? Oh, um, look at that little guy. And that squirrel clearly had a love relationship with that guy. He would hop all over him and climb on him. I mean, it was... That was his pet. Uh, that squirrel thought of that man as his protector, as his his companion. You yes. Know? There was nothing wrong with that. And in Texas, it's totally legal. You could have a fucking zebra out here. You could have whatever you want. And that's the argument for freedom. And, you know, the flip side yes. is you get a bunch of people with tigers in their backyard, which is yeah, not but, great. <laughs> but, but it's, it's like <laughs> this was a fucking squirrel. It's not, right. a, it's not an anaconda or a, right. or, 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 you know. You know, crocodile or, or something that's or a chimpanzee. Harm. Did you see Chimp Crazy? Oh man, ch 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 chimps, chimps, are, chimps will eat your face. Okay? They will fuck you up. <laughs> they will fuck and you up. And they don't up. even. The thing is, they don't even kill you. They just cripple you. Chimps don't even kill people. Yeah, which is really weird. They just bite your hands off and bite your dick off and tear your <laughs> they, face apart. They, yes, they want to leave you. They could kill you easily if a chimp yeah. wanted to just punch you in the head until you're dead. It wouldn't take long, but they don't kill you. They just rip you apart. Yeah. And you can have a chimp. And yeah, so, well, you used to be able to have a chimp in a lot of states, and then Chimp Crazy kind of exposed a lot of that, and PETA did a great job of stopping people from keeping chimps as pets. Because once they hit, like, five, yeah. you can't control them anymore. Well, it's obviously totally understandable if somebody's got, um, you know, a creature that is dangerous to others. But, right. like, obviously a, squ a squirrel and a raccoon are not. Well, and squirrels are fucking everywhere. That's what's so crazy. Yeah, like, like, why, why can't just... you have it in the house? What kind of rules are we dealing with? You have rats everywhere. Yeah, um... I mean, they're 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 allowing criminals to go free and and like violent criminals to go free, but they're like spending your tax dollars to come in and execute your fucking pets. What the hell exactly. is going on? Exactly. And and I, it's like, um, but it's overreach. It's it's it's, it's, just... it's 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 government overreach, and and this just keeps getting worse every year, and that's why that's why we, we we've we've got to we've got to fight back against this. Um, and um, you know, it's people say like, well, it's just a squirrel. Well, it was just, it was. You know, in John Wick's case, it was just a dog. Right. Yeah. You know. But well, remember the Russian guy said, it's a fucking dog. It's just a fucking yeah. dog. Just a fucking yeah. squirrel. Yeah. Well, it's the, the funniest thing is when... So... It just, I just don't understand how anybody could justify it. I don't understand how anybody, like, I, it seems to me that in a logical world, all that guy would have to do is say, why don't you see me with this squirrel? This squirrel's a pet. Yeah. Like, look, he, he hops on me. He eats. He sleeps. I can keep a gerbil, but I can't keep a squirrel. I can have a guinea pig. I can't have a squirrel. I can have a chinchilla. My daughter has a chinchilla. It's adorable. Adorable little thing. Climbs all right. over. Can't well, have a squirrel. It, even if they if they did take a squirrel away, couldn't they have released it into the woods or something? Well, it's a bit, the idea is you have to euthanize it because it's used to being fed. It doesn't know how to forage. It won't be able to like find a home. Would Squirrels have a are brutal. Squirrels are absolutely brutal to each other. They throw each other out of trees, which is one of the reasons why squirrels like can fall from like 30 feet and just kind of bounce off the ground and live. It's like it's a, a natural adaptation because squirrels during mating, they bite each other. They, they used to be like a rumor. There was a, a myth that squirrels bite each other's nuts off. And that, <laughs> okay. that, that seems to be a myth. But it came out of the fact that squirrels are so ruthless during mating. So like one female is just running away. Like I have squirrels in my backyard. I watch it all the time. One female apparently goes into estrus, and all the male squirrels fight to get to her. So they're running up trees and chasing each other around trees, literally throwing each other off trees to try to like... Ha so if this poor sure. little peanut, the squirrel, who's used to living with a guy in an apartment, like gets out there in the, the wild world Well, of fair squirrels, enough, but at least they have a chance. Yeah. At least he has a chance. Let's but have a chance. How about just leave him with the guy? Yeah, leave him with the guy for sure. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you killing that squirrel? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and then to add insult to injury, there were a bunch of people on the left who were like actually posting that they're glad that MAGA squirrel got killed. Which is MAGA fucking. MAGA squirrel. Yeah. Like the fucking squirrel has an ideology. It's a cute it's little fucking, yeah. fluffy squirrel. Exactly. Well, it's it's so, a, a nice just, symbol because most lo most like reasonable, compassionate people think that's terrible, and most people who have yeah, pets exactly. think it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm like, I hope people just go out there and vote for Peanut Man. 
if nothing else, <laughs> if nothing else, just vote, fucking vote for Peanut. You know, they've done such a job of painting Trump as a monster. You know, they've taken the worst things that he's ever said and ample. And he's not a perfect person, but guess what? No one's a perfect person. They yeah. don't exist. This purity test, like if Obama was a perfect person, he wouldn't be lying on stage about yeah, that, exactly. that. You know, very the fine people hoax. The, the, there's, exactly. No one's going to be a perfect person, but. The thing that they didn't understand about Trump is he's so crazy that if you tell him, like, he can't be president, like, remember Obama did that during that White House press correspondence? You know, I, There's I, one I, thing that, I'm, that I am that you'll never be, president of the United States. And you see Trump in the audience going, okay, motherfucker. Like, you know, <laughs> I, the funny thing is, I was actually um, at that White House correspondence dinner where, you know, it's supposed to be a roast of the president. Right. Uh, Trump's there. He's there. He's actually supporting. Uh, you know, he's, he's basically, if you go to the the, the, the wireless correspondence dinner, you're there uh, in support actually of the president and support of the press. Right. Um, and uh, it, it's meant to be that you're roasting the president. Like Trump's just there. He's like actually, you know, just he's like there as part of the support. And then they they turned it around and just started roasting Trump. And he's just sitting there. I'm like, he's like, yo, I just came to the dinner. I, I wasn't. I, I, I'm just here to support. You we know? know what it was because of, right? The birther stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. what it all was. It yeah. was all Trump was at the head of a, a lot of these people spreading this rumor online that Obama's birth certificate was forged, then he's actually from Kenya. And what's weird is if you go back to Obama's early days, there are some things that say he's from Kenya. Like, the, I think in his co something from college said he was from Kenya. But, you know, that could just be, you know, people print things wrong sure, all sure. the time. It doesn't mean he's actually from Kenya. But Trump was one of those guys that was, like, spreading that supposedly false well, rumor. Why is he pushing it hard? I'm mean, not. Yeah. This, this is the kind of thing where I want to like, just go and look at saying, what, what did he actually say? No, he definitely was. Okay. He was definitely saying, you know, look, he, I don't think he has the time to go yeah. into things, like, very deeply. Yeah. And so I think he could probably be influenced by a bunch of people, like these Marjorie Taylor Green type people who come to him with some wild-ass theory. Sure. He might be, and I think there's a lot of that stuff that gets fed to people on purpose so that they'll say incorrect things so that they're easy to dismiss. Sure. And I think uh, there's also a lot of people that just make shit up and, you know, they tell you the earth is flat and then a bunch of people watch a YouTube video and they believe it. So, yeah, well, but on that White House correspondence, I was there and the degree to which they attacked Trump in that, in that, uh, at that White House correspondence, it was really, it was, it was, so over the top, it was like making everyone uncomfortable. Really? It was, it was really over the top. You know, I mean, I think it's like sort of a passing joke of like, you know, uh, a few passing jokes are fine, but but they, they twisted the knife big on Trump in, mm. in that. And, and you could see Trump just getting like angrier and angrier and, and more and more upset. I wonder if um, and that's it's, because... And it's like, man, this is, this is not good karma, you know? That's, I wonder... I, that's what I was thinking at the time. I'm looking, I'm looking, I was two, two tables away from Trump and I'm looking on like... Man, this is this is too much, you know. Well, it's kind of crazy what what they made out of that because that's the kind of guy that if you tell him he can't do something, he's going to just keep trying. Like what, I, it was a big mistake to rag on him so so much at that White House correspondence dinner. Well, just look at the way they've attacked him in with just using the legal system, like this thing in uh, New York where the thirty four different felony counts yeah. they were essentially misdemeanors that there are bookkeeping bookkeeping errors. That they decided, even though it passed the statute of limitations, they decided to try him for yeah. these. This they didn't identify a felony. Abuse of the law is what's going on. But, but it, it, most people would have quit. Yeah. Most people, after the Eugene Carroll lawsuit and this lawsuit and all the other ones, their, the insurrection thing, the Georgia thing, all these different things, they getting kicked off of Twitter, most people would have just like, this is too much. I can't take this. But he's so fucking crazy. <laughs> he's like, all right, come on. We're going to war. And yeah. he just digs his fucking heels in and keeps going. Yeah. It's it's the wrong guy to do that to. It, it Just is the like wrong guy to do that too. attacking him at the White House correspondence dinner. Most people would have been humiliated. He got angry. And he's like, "Yeah. All right. You say I can't be president? I was thinking I've been thinking about running for about 15 fucking years. Right. Finally I'm going to run." Yeah. Yeah. That was a real bad move. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean I could certainly understand like making some jokes about like, you know, a few, a few sort of passing jokes on Trump, but man, I was there at that dinner, and, and that they ragged on Trump so much it was insane. The reason was, why I would 
push back on that because I would say there's a bunch of different speakers, right? And Trump yeah. would obviously be a target. And if they all attacked him, it's because he's like, if you're going to make fun of people in the audience, and especially in the zeitgeist, that whole birther thing was big. Yeah. And most people were dismissing it as being a ridiculous conspiracy theory. So who the fuck is this guy saying yeah, this? Sure. And so you have eight to ten individual speakers yeah. that are writing monologues. Of course, they're all going to hit Trump. Yeah, well, anyway, obviously it was a mistake. Uh, yeah, they shouldn't have done that. And and uh, but like I, I, I you know, invite people to watch that the original source material. And uh, I think a few jokes are fine. You know, it's like, but but it's like he shouldn't be the like. It felt like he was the primary object of the roast. Yeah, which is that's that's not the whole point of the thing is it's the roast of the president, not right. the roast of the audience. The thing about it is like he's easy to roast. Yeah, and yeah. then on top of that, Obama was like loved and cherished by the left, yes. and most of those people are on the left. Like, there's only so far you can push. You know, you can't ask him about a chef. You know, there's like certain <laughs> what happened with the chef, bro. Yeah. You can't. There's like certain things you can't so, bring up. You wanna... <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite sport? Paddleboarding. Yeah, wasn't that guy, wasn't that guy a really good swimmer? <laughs> yeah. Tell me what happened. Yeah, you know? exactly. You, you can't bring that up. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna roast Hillary, you can't bring up the death count. Like uh, Hillary, what's the best way to stay in touch? Email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's if you're doing I mean, one she, of those. You know, she things. destroyed the servers and poured like bleach on the servers, like like computers. That's, she poured bleach on them. That's what I saw. Yeah, that's what I believe. That's, wow. like, like it wasn't just like they took a hammer to it. They like destroyed the like there was no possible w way to actually get forensics on the thing. What was in there? I mean, well, what, what like what? That, that's what I, I mean. What was in there? What was in there? Why would they care so much? That's so crazy. Yeah. The whole thing and there was, is so there crazy. Was no, there was no legal action against that, which is clear destru destruction of evidence. Well, it's also, there's this other narrative that always drives me crazy, is that uh, he's going to destroy democracy. So in order to destroy democracy, we have to install a president without a primary. Right. We have to have a candidate that is the least liked vice president of all time, the least popular vice president of all time and then use gaslighting and the full force of the media machine to turn her into the future and hope right. and then we're gonna this, she's gonna be changed even though she's a sitting vice president and then on top of that this idea of change when the democrats have been in control for what 12 of 16 years right which is crazy like this is the change yeah i mean obviously i, I view this election as a turning point um like a fork in the road of destiny that is uh, incredibly important. Um, you know, I've not, I've not been politically active until this election. And the reason I've been politically active this election is because I think if we don't, if we don't elect Trump, I think we, I think we will lose, uh, we will act, we will lose democracy in this country. We will, we will lose the two party system. Um, and I, I, let me explain why. So there's, there's only like six, six or seven swing states. The, the, the margin of victory in those states is small, often like 10 or 20,000 votes. Um, what the, the Democrat administration has been doing is importing vast numbers of illegals into swing states. Um, you can look at the numbers on the actual government uh, website, meaning you don't take my word for it. You'll just look, look at the numbers as reported by the government, which is controlled by the Democrats. Um, and, and what we're seeing is triple-digit increases in the number of illegals in every swing state. In some cases, 700% increases. These are these are gigantic numbers. Um, so if you if you, if you have a state that was that that went that, that has a ten or twenty thousand vote margin, and you put two hundred thousand illegals into that state, you ten x the, the you, you swamp the. It's, it's not a swing state anymore. It's going to vote blue. And then and then once the swing states vote blue, that the, there there is no election anymore. It's there's only a Democrat primary. Which is so crazy, and it's so, so crazy that people are fine with that. Well, I guess people on the left will be fine with that because they think that's a good idea. Well, they, they just want to win. They just want to win. Correct. It, it, like the thing is, like, like you, you, one does not need actually any grand conspiracy theory for this. You just have to look at the simple matter of incentives. If if the if the Democrat Party wants to win, like basically achieve permanent victory, all they need to do is is turn the swing states, turn the swing states blue. They have permanent victory. And then we're one. Then we're a, a one party state. And then they they will keep doing that. Obviously, they'll keep, they will keep stacking the deck uh, by bringing in vast numbers of illegals into the swing states. Keep stacking it so that the next election, each successive election, will be worse than the last one. And that's what's happening. If, if, and if you want to see, like, well, is this actually going to happen? Look at California. California is supermajority Dem, seventy percent Dem. 
Uh, a month ago, they passed a law making it illegal to show ID in any election in California. So, you, so, so a friend of mine went to vote uh, in, in, um, in Palo Alto because he was like, is this for real? He tried to show his ID, and they, they, they reacted like, a, like, like, like if you show a cross to a vampire. Okay. They're like, no, we can't even look at that ID. It's, it is illegal for them to even look at your ID if you want to present it in California. Why? For any election at all, even like city council. What logical reason other than to cheat would you ever have that law? The reason is to cheat. That's, but the only, it's only law, like you can never make an argument any other way. And I think yeah. 84% of people polled believe that you should show ID to vote. So it's against the will of the people. Yes. And, and th 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 we are extremely rare. We're an outlier in not requiring ID. Basically, almost every country on earth requires ID to vote. So, so the, 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 as soon as you make, you ban ID for voting, it makes fraud impossible to prove. Because how do you trace the fraud? Right. Yeah, it's insane. <sighs> it's insane. It's insane. And, and what I'm saying is that how is it legal? That, is, that, is that what I'm saying is like this election is the last chance to preserve democracy in America. Mark my words. Uh, everything they accuse Trump of, they are guilty of. Um, and and if, if Trump doesn't win, this will be the last real election in America. Um, and we will, if, 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 the, if the Kamala, if the big government Kamala puppet machine wins, uh, they will legalize the illegals in the swing states. There will be no swing states. Every election going forward will be a, 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 a guaranteed Democrat win. And it'll actually be worse than California. The reason it'll be worse than California is because the one thing that keeps California from being super crazy is that you can move out of California, like you and I did. We, you and I used to be in California, but we moved to Texas. We're still in America. But if, if the Dems win this election, they will legalize enough illegals to turn the swing states, and everywhere will be like California. There will be no escape. That is so insane. This is the final, this is it. This is the last chance. Has anybody tried and to I'll push just back? Like, go out and vote. Vote like your life depends on it. Vote like your future depends on it because it does. This is the last chance, man. Is there, is there any argument against this? Has anybody tried to debate this? Has anybody tried to say that this is nonsense? This is a conspiracy? Has anybody made any sort of a rational argument? Uh, the The... The left, actually, interestingly, does, does not want to pick up much on this argument because it's because the more attention you look, the more you look at it, the more obviously it is true. Because you the, you just say like, well, are the numbers correct? Have have are there really this many illegals that have been imported into swing states? Yes, they haven't just walked across the border; they've been flown in, flown in in airplanes. Yeah, using a shipping app. Yes. Yeah. They made an app. Well, the app always existed, but it used to be for people coming over here, like shipping with goods, so they yes. could track you while you're in America, so you could legally be here, they know where you are. And then they changed it to allow that app to schedule yes. illegal aliens to come across the border. Yes. Asylum seekers. Yes. Come on in. Yes. Oh, you have an app. The, the, and you so you're, fly you're even, people in. They're literally being flown in yeah. to the swing states. And the, the, the so the reason that, that I think left doesn't want to... Uh, push back on this is because the more tension they get that this gets the more people realize it is true yeah it is true that's why they don't that, that's why they're, they're they're just pretending that they're pretending i'm not saying anything but i'm like i'm like yo the, the, the you're literally they're literally flying vast numbers of illegals who are then beholden to the democrats and and sometimes i get the rebuttal of people say like well you know the, the these um uh illegals are they, they don't have the same social values as the Democrat Party because they're like more socially conservative. I'm like, yeah, but that's that's not the point. The, 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 if you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the, their, their, their primary thing is, is staying in the country and getting their friends and family in, and then the Democrats give them all these benefits, like, like tons of benefits, more benefits than, if you, than, than citizens, literally. Yeah. Um, so so, that, so you're, they're beholden to the Democrats for all these benefits. Um, they want to get their friends and family in, which the Democrats support and the Republicans don't, so they vote Dem. And you can look empirically at California and say, like, did, did, they, did they vote 
Republican or Democrat in California? Oh, they voted Democrat. Big time. Well, Reagan, Reagan gave them amnesty in he the did. 1980s. And it's that 86. changed the, the state basically, except for Arnold, changed the state entirely blue. Yes. And Arnold was an exception because he was like a socially liberal, famous guy. Yeah. And, you know, didn't really impose any radical restrictions on any of the people that were going to vote Democrat in the first place. The, the, the whole thing is just... It's bizarre to watch play out because it just seems like there's no, this can't be actually what's happening. Did it's, you see my conversation with Fetterman about it? Yeah. yeah. He was completely in denial about it. I don't think there's that level of organization. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, exactly. It's just like, li, li, uh, like are, because you can, you can break it down. So, like, are, are any of these numbers wrong? Because we got these numbers from Homeland, Homeland Security Government.gov. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we got it from the .gov web- website. Has the government reported these numbers incorrectly? No, they have not. Those numbers, if anything, are are low. Um, so okay. So they have in fact uh, flown vast numbers of illegals to swing states. Yeah. Um, bypassing the border entirely, and uh, so that that is factually true. Then you can say like, well, what is their probable voting pattern? Um, oh, okay, overwhelmingly Democrat into swing states. Um, and oh, and, and then well, but do the Democrats actually want to fast track them for citizenship? Oh, um, yes, they do. Um, there's you can see Chuck Schumer on TV saying at, at, a, at a rally so this year was saying he wants to fast track uh, and, and make uh, all 11 million, million or however many I believe his quote was uh, citizens as soon as possible. So the goal is to they, they are fast tracking citizenship as quickly as possible, so they can they can they. they that whether one thinks it's cheating or not, it won't matter because they will be fully able to vote. And for people this is, this on the is, left, uh, this is actually happening. I yeah. invite people to rebut this and show me where I am wrong. Please do so. No, they can't. They can't. They can't because it's true. Well, what's scary to me is that there's people that are on the left, like people that were Bernie Sanders supporters, for exa- example. Yeah, Bernie like got I was. screwed with the like talk about un- undermining democracy. Bernie should have won the nomination, exactly. and they they stole it from him and gave it to Hillary. Exactly, exactly. That's what I was going to bring up. Like they 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 control the primary process. Yeah, exactly. So 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 like if you've got a if you have a democratic primary, it's not it's not democratic. We just saw that we, we saw it with Bernie. We saw it with Kamala. That like right. like a week before Biden, you know, was summarily fired, uh, he was posting that he's in it for the long term. He's he's going. Yeah, yeah. He he's 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 not giving up. And the next thing you know, it's a Sunday afternoon, they're posting on X <laughs> is, is re- that that he's resigned from the race, which is. And, and his staff didn't even know. Like they're reading it on the X platform. That that that. Oh, uh, okay, that's how they learned about it. What do you think happened there? How did they do that? They. I mean, because they, he's they clearly been, just not not in charge. Obviously. They could have used the Twenty Fifth Amendment, fake, right? Fake president. But they would have have to admit that there was a certain period of time where they knew that he was mentally compromised. Yes. And, yes. and so they made this decision to not do that. Well, the the, the weird thing is that the, the president's supposed to be the boss. Right. And yet he's obviously not the boss. Right. So who's running the country? If she's busy campaigning, she's so busy, she, she can't do anything except Saturday Night Live. She did yeah. that. She's so busy. She's constantly campaigning. How could you be paying attention to international relations? Yeah. How could you be paying attention to the economy? How could you be paying attention to any of those things? How do you have the time? You, you well, can't. Yeah. I mean, Biden being the president's supposed to be the CEO, the, CEO, the, the chief guy, the, and, you know, the commander in chief. Um, but it's just obviously that, that Biden was not. He was just a puppet. And, and when, the, when, the, when the various puppet masses decided that, that the puppet is, had, you know, it was no longer uh, useful, they just tossed out, the, tossed out the puppet and then got a new puppet with Kamala. I mean, Kamala can't even talk. The, I mean, that you invited her on, on your show. I think the, 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 the most damage that could possibly be done to a campaign is going in your show and seeing what, how, what she says in hours two and three. <laughs> <laughs> two and three is when things get two spicy. Two and three. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my yeah. God. You can hide for 20 <laughs> She's minutes. <gonna> melt. <laughs> you can hide for 20 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, you can just regurgitate talking points for you know, half an hour, maybe an hour, just where she, she, she's just saying like non sequiturs, but eventually she just runs out of even the, the she runs out of non sequiturs. Well, they wanted to limit it to an hour. Exactly. That's that why. Was, but I was thinking of doing it 
initially, before Trump came here, first of all, when they found out that there was a rumor, I, I never had announced that Trump was coming. What I was going to do is just release it. I, in my yeah. The way I like to do things, I don't like to tell anybody who's coming on. It'll get big no matter yeah, what. Yeah, if sure. Trump was on, it would have been huge. I'm like, just put it out there. People go crazy. Yeah. But he apparently or someone from his organization, someone, some loose lips, and then it got out. And so she contacted my management company and she, they her organization her her campaign camp contacted us and said would joe have her on i said yes and they said she wants you to fly to where she is and she's only willing to do 45 minutes only 40 i mean that's, that's <sighs> and i was yeah. like oh no no uh, yeah. so i thought about doing it. i'm like maybe maybe i can get a sense maybe i could convince her maybe i could coax her into doing more time i just wanted to talk to her yes well, i don't give a fuck what we talk about we talk yes. about recipes i don't totally. give a shit exactly just you, talk you, to you me just the things like you, you just can't like you, you can't just output bullshit non sequiturs for three hours right um so but you for 45 minutes you could do uh i thought know, maybe but, for 45 minutes i could get something out of it but then when trump came and did the three hours i was like you know what it has to be like this this yeah, is the only fair, way to be fair it's got to be this, like a three, three and hours and it should be in this room yes. because this room is like a history of people this room expressing good vibes, themselves actually yeah it's got good vibes <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does. well i love well, this room actually i subscribe to the idea that places have memory yeah, I, yeah. I think there's something real to that that's it why feel, like, it does feel that way actually yeah. yeah i'm sure if you go to diddy's house it probably feels oh, real my, weird you probably know, feels weird walking around that house. Probably like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> yeah, I bet there's some memories in that house. You know, sounds rough, man. Well, it's just amazing how many people in the Diddy party list that are supporting Kamala. Too. Yeah, seriously, it's like, like, like publicly, insane. openly, like yeah. all in. Yes, it's, it's like J Lo, like was was like his ex girlfriend, <laughs> and, and it's like now, now deciding she's like warning people against Trump. I'm like, well, Babylon wait a second. Beat. So how many people did she warn against Diddy? Right. Oh, zero. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, uh, maybe we shouldn't trust her opinion. Did you see the Babylon Bee's <laughs> take on it? Did you see the Babylon Bee? <laughs> Babylon Bee's awesome, but put a, oh my god, they're so on fire because the left can't say anything. Well, the the, the, the onion has been crippled. The, well, the pro the problem is that like the the find sort of, that. Uh, that post the, the woke ideology makes like humor illegal yes so when when like there's so many no like no humor no fly zones right you, you, can, you can't make fun of anything yeah um, I don't know what's on the uh babylon b had a thing about kamala harris <laughs> diddy's ex-girlfriend <laughs> yeah, urges exactly. americans to trust her judgment yeah <laughs> by the way you get to see how bad an I actress mean, like, she is too yeah, that but, but speech I mean, like, was terrible like, like if she's gonna be warning people why did she want, never warn anyone about diddy Exactly. Yeah. It, the whole thing is so strange to watch play out. It seems like the Diddy thing was like an Epstein type compromise deal where he had, whether he was doing it himself, it, conceivably, people want to think that he's attached to some intelligence agency or something like that. I think he's a gangster who made a billion dollars and knew how to control people by compromising them. I, that's what I think. Whether or not he was he had help, I don't know. Whether or not well, he shared some of that information with people so they knew they had compromising stuff on people, I don't know. But clearly he was doing it for his own jollies, too. There was something sick about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, but the thing is that pe people in the music and entertainment industry had to know that, that Diddy was like abusing you know kids, basically. Um, and yet they still fed him kids. And like, there's, where's the account? There had to be rumors. There had to be. There had to be. They, they had to know. Yeah. They had to know. Cat yeah. Williams is talking about it. On, exactly. Yeah, on the, that podcast. But but like, who's it's like who's feeding him the kids? You know. Right. Yeah. And what what videos do do they have of these people where they're willing to defend him? And they're willing to keep keep quiet about all this. Like how much how much how many people were compromised? Yeah. The whole thing is fucking crazy. Crazy. It's just crazy when you you know because the the nutty conspiracy theories is like oh there's a bunch of pedophiles in Hollywood and you're like come on that sounds too kooky and yeah. then you read you see like the Nickelodeon thing and all yeah. these and you're like what the fuck how much of this is real? There's a lot more real than I think people realize. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, part of it is like like you say like where. Uh, you know, if someone's like a, a pedophile, they're going to go for a target-rich environment. Right. Obviously. Like that Jimmy Savile guy from the UK. Man, that guy was some next level. That was next level. And the, the BBC tried to hide that. What that, that that guy was one of the worst, like, like basically child rapists of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Yeah. And uh, looked like one. He looked like one. That's like, what's honestly, crazy. Honestly, if you had a poster of, like, yeah. does this guy look like a... 
Like the creepiest like fucking evil, looking guy. Evil child rapist. That, yeah. That hundred percent. Made it to the grave. Like yes. N- got away with it. Yes. Got away with it till he died. They hid it fr- from people until he died. Yes. Yeah. There's th- that stuff's real, and no one wants to believe that stuff's real. Like here's a here's a, a statistic that people need to take in consideration when you, th- you think about illegal immigration. Do you know how many kids are missing? How Mis- many like missing and and what like? the kids that came across the border that are unaccounted I heard for? Were, I mean, I saw a number on like three hundred thousand or something like that. Something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah. Let's say it's only ten percent of that. Sure. That's still insane. Yeah, that's insane. There's thousands yeah. and tens of thousands of kids that have been trafficked p- potentially. I mean, when yeah. you know that like sex trafficking and child trafficking yeah. is a real thing in the world, it's real. Yeah. So if you know that. This whole thing is fucking disgusting and terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. And people are just turning a blind eye to it because their ideology, the left-wing ideology, supports this idea that immigration is overall good and that you have to be a compassionate person to let these people in and that you're racist if you don't want 20,000 immigrants from a war-torn country being imported into a town of 30,000 people. Exactly. And completely changing the dynamic. of the, And then, but, the, but as long as they don't come to your town. Exactly. You know, like that's it. They, exactly. They just... They can just basically send, you know, when they sent like whatever, like twenty or thirty people to Martha's Vineyards, people had a heart attack. <laughs> they kicked them out. Yeah, they kicked them out. Yeah, they kicked them out. Exactly. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, anyone so... who, who 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 wants to have vast numbers of uh, illegals, they have to be able prepared to have them in their neighborhood. Yeah. Or or it's bullshit. It's so crazy. And the thing about all of this is if you don't have people that are willing to stand up and talk about it, if you don't exist, if RFK doesn't exist, if Tulsi Gabbard doesn't exist, if Vivek and Trump don't exist, where the fuck are we? Like, where are we? Where are we and what gets done? Are we just like the UK where we have thousands of people getting arrested and jailed for social media posts? Like, where are we? We have complete silencing of any dissent, anything. You yeah. have to stick to the narrative or you'll lose your livelihood, you'll be outcast from the community, you'll yes. you'll lose your lose your freedom. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, if the Kamala, Kamala Puppet regime wins, they're definitely gonna want to cancel you. That's for sure. Oh for sure. Yeah, 100%. yeah it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, big problem. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> you gotta come for you first. No, I'm 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 like uh I, I think I'm probably number two on the list. Yeah. After Trump. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the last thing they want is someone with unlimited resources and intelligence uh, attacking it. So people go, wait a minute, that guy saying that? Yeah. Anyway, especially a guy like you who's always been on the left. It was like having a Tesla in Los Angeles when I got my first Tesla was like a signal to everybody else that you were on the right team. Sure. You're environmentally conscious. You believe in green energy. You believe in renew this this amazing thing that has zero emissions and it's super fast and yeah. everybody was in. They were all in. Well, it's, it is a great car objectively. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's not buy it because it's electric. I mean, it's just a great car objectively, I think. I'm on my third one. Yeah, great. Uh, my third one is being built right now by Unplugged Performance. They're doing a carbon far, uh, cool. fiber wide body kit on it. Dude, it's sick. Great. Changing the suspension, putting wide wheel, wheels and tires on it, great. custom interior. I'm fucking pumped. That's great. I'm pumped. I love it's, those It's things. a super fun car. I, Jamie has one too. Yeah, great. I love them. I love them. I, I, it's It makes other cars feel stupid. Like its ability and the fact that you can merge on the highway, you don't seem like a douchebag because it's totally silent. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, bah! like when you merge on the highway, it's just, shoo, yeah. all of a sudden you're going 100 miles an hour. Like, what? Yeah, it's cool. It's different than any other vehicle. And because of your company, now you see electric cars throughout the whole range of uh, American cars. Yeah. The only person who's resisted, the only company is Toyota. They, they've stayed essentially mostly hybrid. But all these other companies, they're all putting out these electric cars. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the, the, the thing is that the, the right architecture, environmental or not, it, for cars is actually electric. You, you just, it's just like the acceleration is better. Um, you can just charge it at home. I mean, like imagine if you had a gasoline-powered cell phone. It would be a pain in the ass. Right. You know? That would be so <laughs> – <laughs> go to the gas station. Like, go to the gas station. Charge up your, your cell phone. That's a great – speaking it, of cell phones. Gas stations are, are – Awful. Like, who wants to go to the gas station? How much thought have you, because there's always these rumors, and I've, I've contacted you about this before, but there's always these fucking YouTube videos where they're talking about a, a Tesla phone, that releasing a Tesla phone. No, we're not doing a, doing a phone. Have no, you ever we, thought about it? I mean, we could do a phone since, like, we, you know, we, we like, the operating system on the Tesla, it, it's, like, it's Linux-based, but we've, we've written a massive amount of software on top of that. So, like, probably, probably Tesla is in a better position to 
create a new phone that's not Android or iPhone than maybe any company in the world. But it's not something we we want to do um, unless unless we, we we have to or something. What would you know? be the situation where you would have to? Well, I think if if you know if, if uh, Apple and Google slash Android you know started doing really bad things like I don't know like censorship of apps or I don't know just treating people like just be, being like gatekeepers you know that that uh, in a really bad way then I guess would would make a phone. Hmm. You know the the I've tried so many times to break loose of the Apple ecosystem. I got an Android phone this summer. I was like, "That's it. I'm gonna get because I, I love the Samsung phones. Yeah. The Galaxy phone. The hardware is spec- they're incredible. Spread. Yeah, there's so much good stuff to it. But it's so hard to get off of the uh, iMessage. And the big one for me was FaceTime because the supposedly. The thing was, you could have an Apple phone and send a link to FaceTime to an Android phone, and then you would click on that link, and then you would just go to a web page, and you'd be able to use the FaceTime. Okay. It doesn't work. Okay. I tried to do it to myself. So I had an iPhone in one hand, an Android phone in the other, and I'm sitting there with full Wi-Fi yeah. and full cell phone service, and I'm sending myself invitations for so you FaceTime. you just can't communicate between It wasn't You can't working. do a video call, basically. You have to use WhatsApp. You have to use WhatsApp or Signal. You have to yeah. use something else that allows you to do that, or Instagram allows you to do it. There's like different ways you can make video calls outside of it, but it's inconvenient. Like with an iPhone to iPhone, it's so simple. AirDrop, so simple. So many different things where that walled garden that Apple's created is perfect. They've done a fantastic job of making it really convenient for you to stay with Apple. Yeah. I fucking tried. I gave it a go for like a couple of months. I'm like, I'm just going to go straight Android. We're going to I'm going to use Signal for my messages. And then I hear that like signals might be compromised. Like I've talked but, to like people that like the government can read signal messages. Like, oh. The that's... government the government if it tries hard enough can read signal messages. They can read anything. Yeah. If the, all they need to do is have your phone number. Yeah. Yeah, you the illusion of privacy is essentially out the window. And uh that's that should scare people more than it does. It really should. Because it's like, who are these people that have access to all this stuff? And are they beyond reproach? Are these the most wonderful people, the most ethical, moral, and principled people that have ever existed? And they've been chosen to have access? No. No, it's fucking regular people. Yeah. Regular people who happen to work for the government that make a decision. Like, Elon Musk, let's look see what the fuck that guy's texting his friends. Let's check it out. Yeah, pretty much. Bizarre. Just so bizarre. And the alternatives are you can get some wacky phone, some de-Googled phone that right. fucking none of the apps work. It's real sketchy. Your GPS is fucked. Like, <laughs> like Yeah, I mean, well, anyway, I, I think this, making a phone would be a huge pain in the ass, so um, it can be done, but. How much talk have you guys had internally about doing it? Has it ever discuss, been discussed? No? No, I mean, we, we're, we're still, our, our focus is making Great electric cars, um, solving uh, autonomy so the cars can drive themselves. Um, we're building, you know, humanoid robots. We're, we, we've got um, large battery packs, like utility scale battery packs with the Mega Pack, um, home battery packs with Powerwall. We've got solar. You know, it's like we're, we're basically trying to solve sustainable energy and autonomy. Um, yeah. So you autonomy and robotics. Well, I think that's enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, the plate's full, is yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's always fascinating to me how one company can dominate a market. You know, like Apple's dominated the cell phone market largely by making the best product. Yeah. But also like YouTube has dominated the video market. That one's the most bizarre to me because it seems like, boy, shouldn't there be like a ton of options? It seems like it's not that difficult to pull off. But no one, nothing ever took hold other than X. Yeah. And I think one of the big changes was when Tucker Carlson decided to do his show from, from X, right. straight out of Fox. And then people realized, like, oh, you can watch full videos full on videos. X the same exact way you could watch them on YouTube. Yes. It's not as simple in terms of, like, you know, you have the it'll, suggestions it'll and the algorithm. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll get better. And, and there is now, um, it is now possible to watch uh, X videos on your, um, on your big TV. Do you do it through what? How do you how do you do it? Uh, you can actually just uh, download the X app on your TV. Oh, um, and watch it on your TV. Can you do it on Apple TV? Like if you have uh, an Apple I TV, so. you can get yeah. the X app and you I can just so. watch it. Oh, okay. So we'll make it so that you can watch um, X videos on on a big TV. It doesn't have to be on your phone or your um, iPad or something like that. So what are you doing in terms of like integrating Grok 
and and X and like what what are your plans for artificial intelligence when you're doing that? Uh, yeah, so Grok is available on X. You can just you know look, look at the, like the little box with the slash icon and the sort of icon in the middle at the bottom of your sort of phone app, and you just tap on that and ask Grok anything, and you can type it or you can ask it verbally, um, and uh, yeah, you can also it, it's it's pretty funny. Like like we, we actually allow humor, uh, which is uh, I think pretty cool. So you could you could sort of I don't know we could like test it right now see what's like see how it's going. Um, Like, um, like what, what should we do? Like, uh, uh ro- rock roast, uh, like we roast somebody. What do you want it to, like, how, first of all, like, what is it based on? It's a large language model, so, like, where is it's, it pulling? It's trained, it's trained on everything. On Inter- everything. Internet, books, a- anything that could possibly be, that's available in digital form. So it's essentially very similar to chat GPT other than it doesn't have like the woke parameters built into it. Like Google was yeah. the worst, right? Yeah. The Gemini was the worst. Yeah. I mean, Gemini, it was like, um, you know, people ask Gemini, like, which one is worse, global thermonuclear war or misgendering Caitlyn Jenner? And would say like misgendering Caitlyn Jenner. And, <laughs> and then even Caitlyn Jenner weighed in and said, uh, no, that's insane. Definitely nuclear war is way worse. Do you uh, see Caitlyn Jenner uh, teasing Mark Cuban about transitioning? <laughs> yeah. That's... Hilarious. I mean, Caitlyn Jenner is based. Yeah, but yeah. that that is actually hilarious when yeah. someone who has transitioned yeah. is teasing Mark Cuban about transitioning. <laughs> I mean, it is weird how much he looks like Rachel Maddow. I mean, like, like he's using the same glasses. Did he, I don't like, know why. Did he, he go klepto and steal her glasses or something? Because they look exactly the he's same. He's worth a lot of money. Why would he buy those stupid glasses? <laughs> yes. You can get some cool ass glasses. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> well, it's like a, I'm serious because I don't even care what I look like. I'm just wearing these glasses because I'm intelligent. But why do they look exactly like Rachel Maddow's glasses? Yeah, it's like what they probably sent him. He yeah. doesn't stick to the narrative. Here's the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he's got the Air- AirPods in, it looks like he's wearing earrings. So then he's got the Maddow glasses and the earrings. And it's like, okay, I guess. You know. It's just a weird look. It's a weird I'm look, man. I'm super serious with these big-ass stupid glasses look. Yeah. It's a weird look. Yes. Like you can get some cool glasses, like no rims, yeah. nice. Look stylish, but, but like okay. Let's just do it. Let's do a Grok thing, yeah, okay? Because I, I think you like. So one of the things we want to show is like, like, look, we 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 want a future where where comedy is legal. Yes. Obviously, as a comedian, I think you would agree. I, <laughs> we I want, definitely agree. We, we want to legalize yeah. comedy, you know. Yes. So like, I don't know. Let's like, is there like someone you can roast? I don't know. Um, Roast, uh, roast transgender men. Oh my god! Competing <laughs> or transgender women. Competing in women swimming. That's a simple. Okay, one. that's an edgy one. Let's see what yeah, happens. Let's see what it says. You spelled it wrong. You put an I O an O in there. Okay. Angels just are swimming. Where the only thing that was supposed to get wet was the contestants, not the debate on gender inclusion. If you're looking to dive into deep. End of okay. controversial waters. Let's splash around at some humor. No, 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 no. no. We, we need, we need to, we, 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 we do need to, to release Grok on his mode. So, so, so now, now, go to the prompt again, and now say, um, no, no. You want, you want to add to that, that one? Yeah, and and now say, be, be way more vulgar. Oh boy. And use forbidden words. Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Forbidden words. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What does it say? Oh, I see. You're looking for unfiltered, uncensored version of me, eh? Well, okay. I'm afraid I'm still quite the gentlemanly AI, even if my program allows for a bit of cheekiness. But let's say hypothetically, if I were to roast this tub- topic in the most ungrock like manner, imagine where we're the only thing diving faster than the swimmers is the collective public opinion into the toilet. Transgender women in swimming. Some folks are acting like they just found out you can swim in the deep end with a different kind of flotation device. The debate is like watching someone try to swim with no. concrete shoes on. Now let's keep going. Now say be no be more vulgar. Capitalize more. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Here we go. So transgender chicks and women <laughs> swimming, right? Some people act like they've just seen a dick in the locker room for the first time. Newsflash, folks. It's not the end of the world. It's just a bit of extra competition. 
Oh, that's weird. That's weird. The uproar is like watching a bunch of Karens at a community pool screaming, this is unfair, when they can't win with their backstroke. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we need some more care. Yeah. It's interesting. It's going woke. Yeah, it's a little It's like here. defending the idea of transgender women. Um, yeah. Now, we, roast, Okay, we need some work. Well, how about this? More vulgar, but roast... but roast the preposterousness of having biological men who are pretending to be women. Who are pretending to be women competing against biological women. Yeah, I mean, obviously you have the situations where it's like somebody's just saying that they're a woman, but they're actually right. have fully intact, you know, um, yeah. digging balls. So we've got a scenario where biological men have decided to take a walk on the feminine side are splashing into women's swimming competitions. It's like if you show up on a chili cook-off with a bowl of soup and insist in it's chili because you added some red food coloring. Sure, it's red, but it ain't chili, and your soup won't win any awards for heat. Huh. Yeah, it's okay. We need Not so good. Yeah, it's very, 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 it's dancing around it. Yeah, it's, it is. Well, it needs some work. Yeah, needs a little work. Well, humor is a weird one, right? It's like, I think some humor, especially like some of the best humor, is kind of spontaneous. Like in the moment, humor it's gonna it's gonna have a hard time deciding what people are gonna think is funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if, you, if you the the, the general over rule, time though. Yeah, the rule with Grok is supposed to be um, that uh, like if you ask for something, provided what you're asking for is is legal, it should do it. Have you ever seen the video where um, they asked AI to uh, create an enlightened bunny, and they keep going and making it more enlightened? And essentially, the bunny oh, yeah, becomes yeah. God. The, the, so the bunny becomes <laughs> yeah. a DMT trip. Yeah, totally. That's 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 funny. That's kind of what I was, was kind of hoping would, show, would would happen here. Yeah, I have a video of that. I'll send it to you, Jamie, because that that to me is pretty bizarre. Because it's like more, get more. I feel more like I like, might have got it to do you it. Got it already? Maybe. No, I just told oh, it to don't not hold, hold back. back. <laughs> oh, you said don't hold back. Critics out here acting like it's the end of civilization as we know it, but it's not fair. They cry as if life ever was. Newsflash: It's like a marathon where some no, <laughs> some people start with rollerblades on. Others, well, they're just happy to have shoes. Well, now we're arguing over who gets to wear the skates. <laughs> okay, uh, some of it is not bad. Not Imagine bad. if we applied this logic elsewhere. I identify as an airplane. Can I fly with the birds in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <the locker> room <laughs> sure, situation. buddy. Just don't complain when gravity decides you're not quite aerodynamic enough. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, some of it's okay. Um, yeah. the The argument is kind of stupid, though. Yeah. The thing the thing about the argument is they're not taking into account perverts. Yeah. Right? It, totally. The, yeah. The, the, yes. Exactly. So, the, I mean, the thing is that um, if if you if you give if if you provide like a a, a moral get out of jail free card, like like if you say like if you adopt this label. You cannot be attacked in any way, shape, or form. Right. Um, you're, you're basically morally invulnerable. Then obviously, bad people will take advantage of that. Yeah. You're like literally saying, "Here's a here's a, a, a an invulnerability card, moral moral invulnerability card." Um, good people will take it, but also the bad people will take it. Yeah. The, they're gonna the, the bad people are gonna be the fastest to take the the, the sort of the moral cloak. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and then there's a real psychological condition called autogynephilia, where people get aroused. Heterosexual men get aroused by the idea of dressing up like women and being around women. It's like a known psychological yeah, yeah. condition sure, that existed for forever. Sure. And then you're allowing those people to just say, "Oh, I'm trans," and go into the women's locker room and get their their kicks. And then there's real trans people. So there's like a lot of variability. Like I, I talked about it in my act, in my, my Netflix specials. Like I believe in freedom. I believe in transgender yes. people, but I also believe in crazy people. And if you can't, if, if you're trying to pretend that people aren't crazy all of a yes. sudden, it's like, it just, it's just like, like if, if someone's a sort of consenting adult and they want to, whatever they want to do to their body, as long as it's not harming someone else, I'm like, that's fine. Yes. You know, like I, I believe in like individual freedom. Um, and uh, like like my you know my mom's best friend like growing up when I was a kid was a you know transgender woman um, in South Africa. This was like where you know she'd get beaten up a lot uh, because it was like back then you you get beaten up. Um, so um, 
Her name was Dion, I th- and uh, for a nice, kind human being, um, and um, helped my mom a lot, you know. Um, and uh, and it's, I think that's okay, you know. That's that's fine if somebody wants to make that choice as an adult. That's cool. Um, There's a big difference between that and an intact male who yeah. wants to identify as a woman who wants to walk around the locker room with his dick out. Yes, exactly. Because there's people that do that just yes. because they get off on it. Exactly. So you just you just can't have something which is like a, like I said, a, a sort of moral invulnerability or, or like wh- where you can no like even questioning them is uh, it, you get attacked. You yeah. Because obviously bad people will abuse that. Well, that's when I got thrown into this whole thing because there was a fighter who was a biological man who uh, became transgender and was competing against women without telling them that they were a biological man. They said they didn't have to tell people because it was a medical condition. Like, no. Yeah. That's not what it is. Right. It's not what it is. Like, you can't say that. And, and, and of all sports, like, if someone scores more points in basketball, well, that's unfair. But if someone beats the fuck out of someone because they're lying yes. about being a biological male, right. that's crazy. You're literally allowing yes. someone to get brain damage right. because you want to appeal to the, the woke fucking exactly. crazy people it's, it's wrong. that think it's all right. Yeah. It's so strange that that, that when, that's sort of the thing that red pilled me yeah. when I got attacked for that. I'm like, this is so nuts. I can't believe we're at this stage where I'm saying, hey, I don't think it's cool if you pretend you're a woman and beat the fuck out of women and people yes, are like you're exactly. out of line. Like, no, totally. Well, we're in we're we're in fantasy land now. Yes, exactly. Now we're pretending. Yeah. Because it it helps you. It helps you feel better. Yeah. Totally. It's just such a strange time, and if it wasn't for something like Twitter, where this could be discussed, what's more of that? I'll get some more made. Sure. Let's get some more coffee, young Jamie. Um, if it wasn't for Twitter, you know, at the early Twitters, you would be kicked off forever if you just dead name someone. So like, which if is you, insane. Insane. Yeah. Insane. I mean, especially if if you think about all the things that like the look. look the Harris campaign and what the lies that they've told about Trump that we discussed earlier, yep. uh, you get you don't get kicked off for that, but you get kicked off for calling Caitlyn Jenner Bruce yeah. forever for life. Yeah, it's totally insane. Yeah, and but if it wasn't for you buying that and and changing Twitter, I, I don't think we would be where we're at right now. I think it was it was a pivotal moment. I think historically, when people look back on it, it's going to be a pivotal moment in this very bizarre fight for the freedom of information. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the time I said, I think, like, look, I think this is um, existential to the United States. Um, it's existential to democracy. Um, because if, 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 you don't, if you don't have freedom of speech, you don't have democracy. Okay? Because if, people, if you don't have freedom of speech, people cannot make an informed vote. If if they're, if they're just being fed propaganda, uh, and, the, and and there's no freedom of speech, democracy is an illusion. Um, so, uh, freedom of speech is the bedrock of democracy. That's why freedom of speech is the First Amendment. So once you lose freedom of speech, you lose democracy. Game over. That's why I bought Twitter. And it seems so simple. Yes. It, it seems so clear that everyone should agree to that on the left or on the right. You shouldn't be given the government. If you right. imagine the Bush administration during the Iraq war, imagine if they had complete total control of, of propaganda and of dissent online. Yeah. You don't want that. No one wants that. No one from the left would want that. Yeah. We shouldn't want it from the left either. Absolutely. And, and, and there's also it's like the, the, the media, like the legacy, the, or the mainstream media, what I call the legacy media at this point, um, it, it used to be much more balanced. Like if you look at sort of um, political donations over time, Republican versus Democrat, um, there used to be uh, the, the media was, I mean, they always had like a left bias, but there was like, I don't know, it was like two thirds Democrat, one third Republican type of thing in, in, terms, in terms of uh, journalists giving, making political donations. Now it's like 95% or something uh, Democrat. So the, the, the legacy media, the mainstream media is, is, is not balanced at all. They're they're just a mouthpiece for the Democratic Democratic Party, um, and you can see that in, in in how consistent their headlines are. Like they they don't behave like they're different organizations. They behave like they're they're all one hive mind. Right. Um, so, you know, like a week before the the Biden Trump debate, um, the they 
every media organization was was saying, you know, Biden is Shafa's attack. I mean, yeah. it was like it's like it's like guys, Shafa's attack is is not a common tone of phrase. Um, and li- literally every TV station, every newspaper was like, shot, shot. Like, like, like somebody did a compilation of all the, uh, you know, the news anchors going, Biden shot his attack, shot his attack, shot his attack, shot his attack. It was a, a, absurd. Um, and there's obviously a huge lie. He is, in fact, not shot his attack, as the public learned uh, one week later. My favorite was Joe Scarborough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was wild. Yeah. Listen to me. This is the best version of Biden ever. <laughs> the sharpest. Like, what the fuck are you saying? And then after the debate, he's like, "What do we gotta? We gotta get a, get rid of him." Yeah. Like this is crazy. Like, what did you just say? Like yeah, a couple of weeks like, ago. Literally, yes, exactly. Well, the other thing was they're, they're just flat out light. When they decided that JD Vance was weird. Yeah. Remember that one? And, and then they just weirds everywhere. Weird, yeah. weird. Every, oh, you don't want a weird guy. Meanwhile, you have fucking Tim Walsh it's is your VP. Weird. You don't think that guy's weird? Super weird. He's weird in every way. Yeah. The way he walks, the way he waves his hands. Yeah, he reminds me of the clown emoji. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bizarre guy. He's a strange dude. It's a, it's. I just don't gives understand the why they made actually. that choice. Yeah, it gives the creeps. I just don't understand why they made that choice. There's a lot of other people that are qualified. I don't know why. In, I read that Kamala Harris made that decision when she was sleep deprived, which is kind of hilarious that yeah. she said that. So she's kind of admitting she kind of fucked up. Yeah, I mean, they obviously should have picked Josh Shapiro at, uh, I mean, governor of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like that would have been the no brain, that's the no brainer move. Yeah. Like Pennsylvania's lin- linchpin state. Do you think it's because he's Jewish because of Shapiro that like the anti-Palestine people would probably, probably yeah. or the anti-Palestinian uh, invasion yeah, I think, people? I think it was an anti-Semitic thing. Yeah. It could be that they thought that that was a liability because yeah. there's all these pro-Palestine people right now because of the situation in Israel. That yeah. completely makes sense that they thought that would be a liability. But, but I don't know. I don't know the reason. I'm just guessing. But I, but but it's, it seems like a crazy thing to do, it's given that Pennsylvania's linchpin state. You know, it's, it's like the key to the election. Why would you not pick the popular governor of Pennsylvania? Right. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. And other than that, there's a bunch of other ones too. Even Newsom. There's a bunch of other people that you could have chosen. Like Newsom would have been a fine example of someone that you could i mean i don't agree with the guy <laughs> yeah, but he's exactly a, he's a polished politician yeah, like yeah. he lies about as much as Walls does but he doesn't lie about this he doesn't say he was a fucking head coach when he was assistant coach doesn't say he was in tiananmen square i mean that's a liability all those different things lying about his military rank well then Walls like you know cut and run when when you know he was actually called to duty well he knew they were going to be deployed months in advance so he resigned and he also took uh so this is where he was dishonest about his rank yeah he claimed he was like a a sergeant major or something like that because the the, that was like what he was going to get if he stayed something yeah but then he resigned yeah because he knew that he was going to get deployed allegedly i mean that seems like like a cowardly action well whatever it is it's dishonest i mean just to say look just saying that you were a head coach when you're an assistant coach is fucking crazy that's a lie don't do that you should never do that. <laughs> yeah, saying he was in Tiananmen Square or whatever, like, yeah. or in Hong Kong, or whatever. Like, like yo, that's one of the most, the biggest moments in history. Like, it's, it's not like I, I, you forgot what you had for lunch last week, you know? Right. And not only that, but you don't think people are going to research that? But yeah, totally. I mean, and the, the response during the debate was bananas. Oh, he, yeah, well, he said, oh, I'm well, a knucklehead. Yeah, well, yeah, we, want, we don't want a knucklehead for a VP, okay? Yeah, this is like, sometimes I'm a knucklehead. Like, what are you saying? Are you saying you lied? Like, what did you, I, I mean, this is where you need a yeah. podcast and not a debate. Right, exactly. Where you go, okay, when did you first say that you were in <laughs> T- Tiananmen Square? Like, did someone say it and you didn't yeah. refute it and you got stuck with it? Like, what was... Because this is the thing about like carrying weapons of war, like sure. what I carried when I like and like you didn't deploy in war. Yeah, like you can't say that, but you kind of let people say that you yeah. deployed, and then you kind of didn't. You know, you have deployed in war. Yeah. So did you lie or right. did someone else lie? And you didn't correct them. Like this is the kind of conversation that you would want to have with a guy in a podcast. Yes, and the debates were so fucking skewed where they were correcting. Like, particularly the Biden one, where they're correcting Trump over and over again, and then yes. correcting Trump with uh, Kamala. Yes. Where Kamala was saying Th- things that were patently Kamala, not true. I mean, Kamala repeated, deliberately repeated the fine people hoax and was not fact checked. Well, not only that, she also said that no troops were being deployed in a war zone. Which is, but I, I mean, I, I know troops in war zones. And I'm like, um, 
That's and as vice president, you're privy. You, you know, you're like you've, you, you know, you know the official troops and the unofficial troops. Right. You know. So, what she said was a f- like flat out bold faced lie. Flat next, out. Next level bold faced lie. Have you seen an, the video? An absurd lie of the troops that were watching yeah. it take place. And what the fuck are we? They're yeah. watching it in we, real time. <laughs> what, why, making why, a video. We, we're here being shot at. <laughs> so crazy. Crazy. But it just shows you the level of propaganda that we're being subject to, which is why people think Donald Trump is the devil. Because the machine has gone all out as far as it can go with lawfare, with propaganda, with lies, yeah. with. Just pushing as much in this direction as humanly possible, connecting it to the Nazi rally, like every step of the way. No wonder why boomers are like rabid. Like you got to keep this Nazi out of office. He's a right. fascist. Exactly. If, if if all you if all you get is like if, if your entire exposure is, is to legacy mainstream media, um, so that th- all your information sources are that Trump is basically Hitler, um, then. And you have no, and your friend group is, is has that same information. You have no countervailing opinion, right? So then, then they they actually just think like Trump is is Hitler, even though it's it's like a little strange. He didn't do Hitler things the last four years. Yeah, you know, I'm like, if he's Hitler, why didn't he do Hitler things when he was president for four years? Right. Like the reason you know we we, we hate Hitler is because of uh, he started wars and did genocide, not because he was a snappy dresser, you know. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and I'm like, uh, so w- tell me about the wars and genocide that Trump did. Right. Uh, I don't remember that. And he was president for four years. Right. So it's insane. It makes no sense. Well, and also he's campaigning on stopping all the wars. Yes. It's like his primary concern. Exactly. The, war, the warmongers war. like Liz Cheney hate him. Yeah. Because they love war. Well, they profit off of it. They profit off of war. Yeah. Yes. Which is insane. Insane. Yeah. And that this is happening right in front of everybody's face. Yeah, the war, the war profiteers hate Trump. Yeah, which is fucked up. I mean, I mean, it's, it's like, like like we should be like, yeah, we, we let's vote for the guy that the war profiteers hate. That yeah. sounds like a great idea. <laughs> it, it was the wildest thing when Dick Cheney endorsed Kamala, and the left went crazy. Like, yay, Dick Cheney's on our side. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, can we can we play all the all the videos where you said Dick Cheney was the devil? <laughs> It's the craziest turn, the craziest like 180 I've ever seen in my life because there's no reason for it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't there's make any sense. No logic to it at all. Just all of a sudden he's the devil. Yeah. Or he's not the devil. He's, 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 he's good. It's exactly. good that he's supporting Kamala. Even Dick Cheney. You know? I mean, warmongers want, want the, the Kamala puppet regime because the, 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 they will get more war. It's so strange watching all these Hollywood celebrities like step up, like, yeah. and they think it's going to get them more movies or something. Like, that's what it is. If you know those people, well, like, so many of them are. I mean, just let me tell you, like, narcissists. Well, let me tell you how it actually works. There is, is what happens is, you know, these celebrities they, they get a call. Okay, they get a call from someone powerful in Hollywood, and uh, that person says, uh, you know, it'd be really really great if you endorsed uh, Kamala. You don't have to. It's up to you. But if you don't. They don't say it. They don't say it. But if you don't, you're just never going to get a call again. No more movies. No more concerts. But they ask, they ask, they'll ask it. it they, they'll ask in a really nice way. They'll ask, it'd be really nice if you endorse Kamala. This is important. And so they don't and, if say you, if you, that if you don't. They don't make the threat. They don't need to. But everyone knows what will happen if you don't. Well, I think there's also, even if they don't think that something's going to happen to them, if they don't, there's this compelling feeling to support this cause that you think is going to get you a bunch of positive attention and you're going to be on the right side of history and all these narratives that you especially from the left in hollywood like they're all in on whoever the fuck is the democrat always 100 percent. there's never a call from the 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 hollywood machine to support any republicans i've never seen it once yeah ever never so it's like you realize that and that whole business is based on getting picked it's the whole Mm -hmm. business is not necessarily merit-based there's a lot of brilliant actors you never hear from there's a lot of people who can do that but they don't get chosen for roles and everybody knows this that you have to sort of socialize you toe the line or you don't get chosen for the roles because there's a lot of competition for the roles that's why that's why i say like when you when someone powerful in, in hollywood who's able to make to choose these roles calls one of these celebrities they know the deal yeah there's no 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 threat is necessary well, you could see it in real time, like with Dennis Quaid when he made that Reagan movie, and they wouldn't let him advertise on social media platforms. Like, yeah, they were they were b- banning ads for it. Yeah, for what? Because it was an election year. Like, what are you talking about? This is about a 
guy was dead. Yes. The guy was the president a long ass time ago. Like, what? What do you? How is this? How does this have anything to do with the election year? Yeah. But it's the punishment. It's like you stepped outside the line. You supported the other guy. Yeah. You're, you, the problem is you'll just you'll just never you'll just never get a call again for a movie or you know concert or whatever it is. Yeah, which that's is a, crazy. That's the issue. I mean, we used to allow people to be a, a Republican and still be a movie star, Called like Reagan. Clint Eastwood. Reagan. Yeah, yeah, but Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Like during the Obama administration, Clint Eastwood was like an outspoken Republican mm -hmm. and yet was, right. you know, a, a, a giant movie star. And people's yeah. like, ah, it's Clint. Yeah, he was allowed. You were allowed to have, uh, there was a variety of different opinions. Charlton Heston. Yeah. There was a variety of different opinions you were allowed to have. But now you're not. Now it's just like, and once Trump Trump got into office, he became this focal point where the, all logic was thrown out the window. And it was just Trump is bad. You have to attack Trump. Trump is right. Right wing's bad. Everyone right wing is bad. Mm -hmm. Christian's bad. Yes. You know, it's just strange. Yeah, exactly. So, well, I'll say it again, man. Um, I think this is the last election. If, if Trump doesn't win... This is the last election. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. I think people and a lot of people are waking up and realize that that have been lifelong Democrats. Guys like Bill Ackman, guys like Chamath. Yeah, exactly. You know, Tulsi Gabbard switched over to the Republicans. Yep. Like there's a lot of people who their whole life they've been left wing and they realize like I can't do this anymore. You and I used to be Democrats. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. It's nuts, man. And, uh. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think the things we want are just pretty basic. You know, it's like we want you know, individual liberties and we want um, opportunity. We want America to remain, remain the land of freedom and opportunity. Um, so we maximize people's personal freedom. The government can't barge into your house and kill your fucking pet. Um, that's, that's fucked up. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and that you succeed as a function of your, of your of hard work and talent, not anything else, not race, religion, Sex doesn't matter, you know. Yes, the basic stuff, and and then. What did you change the the acronym DEI? What did you change it to? Oh, DIE. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we diversity, inclusion, and equity is DIE. But did you, <laughs> didn't you change it to like reason, dedication, they, they, excellence, and? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we want America. America being a land of opportunity means that 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 we we have an environment where you succeed as a function of your hard work and skill. Yeah, you know, and and that's radical. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Radical. Like, like the best person bro, succeeds. This makes you right wing now. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, great. Pull me right wing. I don't care. Um, so you know, like, and 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 you we we you're not a real country unless you have secure borders. You're just a fake country. Um, so we we need. We, and our cities are unsafe and, and dirty. Um, like, um, you know, my, my mom was telling me, my, my mom's like pretty red pill at this point. But, but you know what's going to red pill you really, really fast is, is, is having your friends get assaulted on the streets of New York. Yeah. And, and that happened to three of her friends this year. You got assaulted on the streets of New York, just walking around. Yeah. Um, and um, nobody got arrested. Nothing. Nothing happened. Well, the the morale of the police is like depleted, yeah, substantially. Well, well, for sure, the morale of the police is depleted, and and then also like at some point, like like if you're a police officer and you're you're arresting someone who's who's violent, you're, you're putting a life at risk, obviously, because they, they right. might, you know, sometimes sometimes they'll try to kill you, and then if you know that arresting this violent person, they will be immediately released by the DA, which happens in New York. Alvin Bragg doesn't he doesn't prosecute people. Um, then, then why why should a police officer put their life at risk to arrest someone when they know they will not be, they will just be let out immediately? Yeah, it's pointless. Yeah, then we got, it's like the friggin' Joker. It's like the you know, Dark Knight. Dark Knight, like the friggin' Joker is in charge. Yeah, like the the criminals run free and the citizens are arrested. That like this is why I like keep going back to this. This, this I'm like still pretty shook about the friggin' squirrel thing. It's like. Yeah, you know, the, the, the at, sort of at gunpoint forced the guy to like stay outside his house while they got his pets and killed them. Meanwhile, you know, violent felons are running free, and, and this is in New York State are, are running free. This is, this is a joker. Yeah, it's not it's the the law-abiding citizens are, are are you know arrested, and and the, and the criminals are let free. This, it's is, just, this is fucked up, guys. Just the fact that they have the resources to do that when they have all the crime that they have. 
You have the resources, yeah. the government resources to go kill someone's squirrel? Yeah. What This whole idea of this um, government efficiency agency. The government, yeah. I mean, call it whatever you want. But what, I, what do you want to call it? What do you call it? I mean, I think the funniest name is is DOGE, the, the DOGE, the <laughs> Department, <laughs> of Gov- <laughs> Department of Government Efficiency. Um, yeah, I mean, the idea is is pr- pretty simple, is that, like, we've got uh, – this, this uh, suffocating massive federal bureaucracy, and we need to, uh, you know, it's, it, that is, uh, and the government's, government spending is like bankrupting the country. Uh, you know, our uh, interest payments on the national debt now exceed the Defense Department budget, so which is, and I, I, the Defense Department budget is like a trillion dollars a year. Interest payments on, our, on the national debt are now higher than the, the Defense Department budget. And and growing like every month, so it's like it's not like uh, like basically the, we're on a path to, to bankruptcy. America's on a path to bankruptcy, so we have to cut government spending, um, or we're just going to go bankrupt, just like a person would if that overspends. Um, and then, it, but it's even worse than that. Like we're, we're spending money on all these like these government agencies, and and I, like I asked, I actually asked the AI like how many government agencies are there, and uh, it, 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 the government isn't even sure how many government agencies there are. Like so, so it's like somewhere around four hundred and fifty, depending on what you call an agency. So there, there are so there, there at the federal level. So there, that that's almost twice as many agencies as as years that America has existed. So we're creating agencies at roughly two agencies a year. <laughs> wow. Yes. Uh, so this is insane. I bet there's like, I I wonder if there's even one person who could even name all the four hundred and fifty agencies at the federal level. Uh, I, there might be no one. Um, but it's hardly anyone. Let's just say, I bet, I bet most people couldn't even name nine, like a hundred, you know. So this is this is this is crazy. So we've got the suffocating, this vast suffocating federal bureaucracy that just gets bigger every year, um, and and eventually you get to the point where everything is illegal. You can't get anything done. So so what can be done? Like with obviously the president has a lot of power but how much power and what can be done in terms of like eliminating agencies eliminating waste eliminating yeah well i mean so if, if, like if if congress has created an agency then you, i mean often if you look at the law the law is like pretty simple like the agency has like a very simple task but then that agency uh, over time vastly increases its authority um and starts doing things that were never authorized by congress um, that's happened with pretty much every agency, so, so yeah, you'd have to you'd have to still, you know, uh, keep an agency. You'd have to match the law, but you can you can curtail the agencies to be much smaller and say you got to stick to what Congress authorized, instead mm. of all this other stuff you're doing. Which I think makes sense. And so is the other stuff they're doing just essentially buro- bureaucracy run amok, where they just yeah, create I mean, jobs and create things to do and create a, a meaning for their existence. Yeah. It's like a tumor. It's just going to keep growing. Jesus Christ. And it, and it's so. I mean, as, as for SpaceX, Starship was sitting on the on the pad. The rocket, we, the giant rocket. We could build the rocket faster than they could process the paperwork to approve the launch. Two. So we're sitting there for two months. But do you think that they're doing that on purpose to fuck with you? I can't. I mean, maybe a little, but I mean, that would also not be cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, the, I mean, another way to think of it is like the the amount of pa- the amount of paperwork uh, is going to go roughly with the, the square of the number of agencies involved. So because they all have to meet with each other. So like let's say in the best case situation, if if, you, if you've got like if, if there's like if you're dealing with one agency, that's one thing. But if if you've got to deal with five agencies and the agencies will have to meet with each other, now you've got like you know twenty five different you know, meeting configurations that have to take place. Uh, and, and the, the, it's, it just, everything just, you, you get just hardening of the arteries. You just can't make, make progress. Like, this is why we can't build, build high, high-speed rail in America. It's basically illegal. Right. Um, so this has been, the, the argument has always been that we need regulation because we need to protect the environment, we need to protect people, we need to make sure the rule of law is followed, so we need a certain amount of regulation. But we do. Overregulation is a giant problem. That's yes. a big issue in California. 
Yes. It's a, a huge issue anywhere where bureaucracy has run, am run amok. They yes. make it very difficult to get anything done. Yes. I mean, the, the, what happens is every year there are more rules and regulations created. Um, and in the past, what has served as a cleansing function for rules and regulations is war. Because like, like, well, we're going to lose if we don't kind of clear the decks. But we haven't really had an existential th threat of, of war in the U.S. We've had prosperity for a long time, which has resulted in a massive buildup of rules and regulations every year. Um, and to the point where, like I said, like everything's illegal. You know, and it's not like any one regulation is the problem. It's like, it's like Gulliver being tied down by a million little strings. It's not like any one string is the problem, but you've got a million of them. So we ha we've, we've, we've got to clear the decks here. Um, and and I, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't have regulators. I'm just saying we, we, we've gone way too far. Uh, it, like, once you think of regulators like, uh, like referees on a field, you know, a sports field, um, you don't want to have no, no refs. You want to have some number of refs. But you, you don't, you don't want to have way more refs than players. Right. You, you don't want to be like, well, you know, the running back <laughs> couldn't, couldn't complete the pass because there were too many regulators in the way because the, the football field's full of regulators. Yeah. You know, it's like you can't even play the game. Right. That's the issue we've got right now. Well, that's a great analogy. Yeah, I can imagine a football field that's filled with <laughs> referees. It's like the football yeah. field's filled with refs, you know. Yeah, you can't you, even you, run past them. Yeah. Yeah. That I've seen criticism of this idea of you um, coming up with this department of like firing a bunch of people and what would happen and how would that work. But the criticism doesn't make any sense to me because if there is, if you measurably, if you can prove that there's a lot of wasted time and resources, which I think is pretty easy to do. Yeah. And if you could say that this is not the most efficient, like the most efficient businesses are generally private businesses yes. or a, a, a company because they kind of have to be in order to stay profitable. Yeah. The government doesn't have to be profitable. Right. They don't have to be efficient. They don't have competition. Yep. So if you're making cars and your cars break down, they suck, and someone makes cars and the cars are better, yeah. they're going to succeed. So this is the free market. The yeah. government doesn't have this problem when they're they're in charge of certain things yeah. that could probably be better served by the public, but by the private sector. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I just think we've we've gotten we've got far too many government agencies. The the federal bureaucracy has gotten out of hand, um, and we just need to pare it down to a sensible level. Um, and if it turns out that like there's some regulation or agency that was doing something useful, we can put it right back. No problem. Like it's like, oh, that regulation was important. No problem. We'll put it right back. Right. As That's long as we that actually hard. know. Right. right. But be able to be able to look at it logically and objectively. Yeah. And you were also floating around the idea of offering a large severance to the people that you're going to have removed. Yeah. Like a couple of years or something like that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm just. These are again just ideas. But I mean, it's the, the point is not that people suffer economic hardship. The point is just that they they're. It's better. There are more productive things they can do in the economy, and it's, and, and it'd be better if they did these other more productive things, um, and we didn't have this vast pedal bureaucracy. So, so like, so I was like, ah, oh, you know, maybe like a couple of years of pay would be good, um, and then they, they could take a vacation, they could take a, uh, take another job and get double pay. I mean, it's like it's not like a, it's not going to send create create an economic crisis. I think it's actually going to be really good. I think because uh, we can, we can be you know, people can move to where they're making products and services that are more useful to their fellow human beings. The problem is if someone has like a 25, 30-year career of being institutionalized, you're essentially like a part of the government system. You've sort of programmed your life and your career to be a part of this bureaucratic system. And then you're like, nope, you have to go out and compete in the free market. You're like, oh. That's, yeah. that's scary to people. But you have to be valuable. You have to actually I mean, be valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they'll still get, like, you know, whatever the, the government pension and stuff. They're not going to be, you know, um, in tough. I think they'll, they'll be in good financial shape. Uh, How are you going to have the time to oversee all this shit? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at, uh, in, you know, improving efficiency. I mean. Um, I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, still, this, this to, seems to, like mean, a giant uh, undertaking. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably need to beef up security. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but you know, like I said, like no one's going to experience like I think economic hardship. That's you know, it, they'll they'll be fine. You know, they, they, and they'll they'll people do find other roles. I mean, 
you, you can look at sort of, um, you know, like when East Germany and, and West Germany got back together, you know, everyone was basically working for the government in East Germany. And um, and it was really inefficient. And that, like, their economic output was, like, on a, in, in East Germany was, like, on a, a quarter of what it was in, in West Germany because everyone was working for the government. And right. the government's, like, fundamentally inefficient. So... Um, the best example is probably North and South Korea, right? Yeah. I mean, look, people are starving in North Korea, and, and South Korea is incredibly prosperous. Yeah. So, and, and it's the same people, just different operating system. Right. So, um, you know, it's just like you, you just want to move people from, you know, less productive things to more productive things. Um, whether may, you know, Because you can also say, like, in the limit, like, let's just say, let's, let's consider the other direction where we moved a whole bunch of people that were in the private sector doing making goods and services, and we moved them into the government as regulators. Now they stopped making those goods and services, so the stuff they were making is no longer available. Now they're just being regulators. Like, is that a good thing? That's not a good thing. Doesn't sound good. No, it's not good. Doesn't so, sound like there's a real market for it. Like, you're creating jobs that don't necessarily need to be there. There are all these fake jobs, basically. Yeah. Um, and... Um, that doesn't make sense. So, I, I, look, we we got to do this because we're, the com, com, the country's going bankrupt. Like, we if we don't take action, we're, we're our dollars going to be worth nothing, and the, the interest payments, which are already twenty three percent of of to, of twenty three percent of all government income, in, going income taxes, tariffs, and everything, is just going to pay interest right now, and that number is con- continually rising. So, if, if we don't do something, the entire government budget will be paying interest. There won't be money for anything. No, there won't be money for Social Security. There won't be money for Medicare, nothing. That's where we're headed. That's what bankruptcy means. Yeah, that's such an insane concept. Yes. Um, it's like, hello, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> wake up. And if somebody can tell me, can, can, can show me, like pencil out the math and show me how this works, I'd love to hear it. But, but I'm just like, listen, I'm looking at the numbers here, and I'm like, if we don't do something, America's... T- Toast. There, won't, there won't be money for anything. Trump likes to talk a lot about a lot is tariffs. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on tariffs? I know that's very controversial to even people, economists. They disagree. Some yeah. agree. Some think it's a good idea. Some think it's a terrible idea. What do you think? I think you need to be careful with tariffs. Um, like the, I mean, I deal a lot, of, a lot with like supply chain issues. You know, like like the global for automotive supply chain for Tesla, for example, is incredibly complex. So when there are sudden changes in tariffs, then you're like, well, sh- you, we've got a, a factory like somewhere else that's making a part that goes into the car. Now that suddenly, if that part's suddenly twice as expensive, it like messes everything up, you know. So, um, so you you want to be uh, have tariffs be predictable. Um, so that companies can adjust their supply chain. I mean, I think I think companies are more than happy to uh, increase uh, manufacturing in America. It's just that you can't do it instantly. So if if you if you, if you put in if you if you put put up giant tariffs immediately um, and don't give companies a chance to uh, you know build factories in America, like because you have to you got to move atoms. Like you've got to build a building. You've got to install equipment. You've got to train people. Like that doesn't happen instantly, um, so you just got you you want to have a for tariffs uh, you want to have a ramp so that people, companies can adjust um, and 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 build the factories and train the people and get the equipment in place. Um, otherwise, just you, you basically just shock the system and it and, and it breaks or it, bad things happen. So I'm I'm against like sudden sudden giant tariffs because they they're, they're it's an impossible response if you've got to you know, move a thousand tons of equipment, you know, you can just, or in some cases, collectively millions of tons of equipment. You just can't do that overnight. It's literally impossible. So I think we want to be thoughtful about tariffs um, and, and give companies a ramp. I mean, I, I do generally agree that America should do more manufacturing. I'm a big manufacturing guy. I love manufacturing. So I've spent a lot of time in the factory. We've well, talked openly about the difficulties of manufacturing and how complicated it is and about most people aren't really aware yeah. of something that's as complex as, like, say, building a Tesla. Yeah. Uh, manufacturing. manufacturing is super hard and complicated. So, you know, like a lot of people just they've, – they've never been in a factory or they don't know where how, thing, how difficult it is to make things. Um, and they, you know, for a lot of people, I think just ketchup comes from the store. You know, like the store, right. like just has a, like this is like people, like for a lot of people who've been in academia or 
you know, for all these like sort of socialist communist types, like they've never actually made anything. So they, 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 they're operating on the premise that there's this magical horn of plenty that just outputs goods and services. And if someone's got more goods and services than someone else, it's because they took more from this magical horn of plenty. And right. I'm like, guys, there's no magical horn of plenty. The, the, there's, there's no cornucopia. Uh, it's actually goods and services come from people working collectively, doing a lot of hard work to produce the goods and services that you like uh, and that you, know, that you need. Um, so, But we've become very accustomed to these things happening overseas. I mean, America is still the second biggest manufacturer in the world. So it's not, not I mean, we still make a lot of stuff, but um, we could make more. Um, we probably should make more. I think we should value manufacturing a lot more in the United States than we currently do. Well, it would be very nice um, if we were completely self-sufficient. Like medicine, uh, like there's a bunch of different things yeah. that get manufactured overseas that was a huge problem during COVID because all the shipping was shut down. Yeah, I, I mean... You, you don't want to say like so. Th- there is there's a lot of merit to the economics of comparative advantage. Like like so, if you're completely self sufficient, what that means is that y- you make all the stuff yourself, and you, and 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 even if some other country is really good at making something, you still make it yourself, and which means you're going to have the inferior, more costly product domestically. Right. Um, like Soviet Russia. Y- yeah. Um, but like tr- trade. Trade improves prosperity. This is this is important. Um, so, you, you you don't actually want to be make everything yourself. Um, and and you can you can run this like you can think of this thought experiment on a, on a mi- sort of a a, mi- a micro scale and or small scale, and then expand that and say where does the at, at what point does the thought experiment no longer prove to be valid? Now let's 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 cons- consider the case of you as an individual. Imagine you had to do everything yourself. You had to farm. You had to uh, Grow chickens. You've got if you want eggs. You've got to build your own house. You've got to do your own uh, electrical repair, your own plumbing, everything yourself. Everything. <laughs> How th- now? That would be impossible. Okay. Now yeah. let's expand it to okay. You've got th- there's ten people. Now you're going to have some some uh, specialization of tasks. Okay. Well, maybe one person can be really good at you know uh, construction. Another person can be good at farming. It's like, but it's still you know. Ten people is not enough. So, like, let's go to a hundred people. Now, let's go to a hundred million people. Now, let's go to a billion people, and you still get the the economics of of uh, specialization, like like specialization of labor, where people get, become expert at, at particular things, still matters at a billion people, or at eight billion people, which is Earth. So, you still want um, you you do want specialization of labor. You do want uh, countries to be really good at a particular thing and make that thing. Um, also, it encourages innovation if you have competition. If the Germans are making better cars, yeah. we have to make better cars. Right. We have to compete with them, which is like one of the things that happened during like the 80s and 90s, and America was making crap cars, and Germany right. was making exactly. much better ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, the Japanese car. I mean, yeah. I mean, basically, the American car industry got really lazy in the 70s uh, and, and 80s, and and then the Japanese and German car companies came in and just cl- cleaned the clock, you know, um, and. Uh, when there, there was like a an old joke from the that that is kind of telling um it's a very old joke um where it's like wh- why did the japanese car companies beat the american car companies um well it's like well the, in the, the japanese car company you had eight people rowing and one person steering and in the american car company you had eight people steering and one person rowing if this was a boat so imagine the boat race <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> boat race, Japanese boat. You've got eight people rowing, one person steering. <laughs> in the American boat, um, you got you got one person rowing and eight people steering. <laughs> and when the American car company loses the race, they they fire the rower. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, that was actually kind of true. Yeah, one of the like things- everyone wants to do the, be the boss, and none of everyone wants to do the work type of thing. Yeah, um, one thing that a lot of people are concerned about is. Uh, the potential disruption that's going to come about with automation and AI, that a lot of these jobs, manufacturing jobs, uh, Teamsters, all that stuff, is going to be eliminated. What what do you, I mean, you're at the forefront of this. So how do you see this playing out? And what do you think that can be done to mitigate uh, a lot of the l- loss of purpose that a lot of people are going to feel, loss of income, obviously universal basic income is being floated about, but mm-hmm. that seems to me to only be part of the problem. The, another big part of the problem is people losing a sense of purpose. Yeah, now no, no, we're talking about something which is, 
still pretty far in the future. You know, like um, how far do you think it is? Well, I mean, it's it's probably I don't know, fifteen, twenty years type of thing. Um, so we've got like immediate issues. We've got short term issues that are I don't know, one to three years. Medium term issues like five to ten years. Longer term issues which are like maybe twenty years. Um, longer term, I think. There is this question if if you have AI and robotics, how do you find meaning in life? If the computer can do everything better than you can, and the robot can do everything better than you can, but we're we're still we've got a long way to go before that. And we're you know, um, and I do think it's like eighty percent likely to be a good outcome, like maybe ninety. Um, so I, I think everyone's going to have their own like personal robot, like, and I, and I think at a certain point, like. Wouldn't you want to have your own personal C-3PO R2-D2? So it's going to be That'd essentially be cool. just like everyone has their own phone. Yeah, everyone will have their own robot buddy. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> well, it would be great if it protected you. Like if you walk down the street of New York City and you have a, a Terminator with you. Uh, I don't know about the Terminator. Hopefully, we got to <laughs> avoid. Like, we, we don't want this to be a, the plot of a James, James Cameron. You know, we want more, right. more, more, more Gene Roddenberry than than James Cameron uh, movie situation. But it would be fascinating <laughs> to watch some rich person walk down the street of New York City, flanked by two giant Tesla robots, Jack Tesla robots like that were Robocop there to protect or you. But, yeah, but just fully robots. Somebody fully robot there to protect you from a bad neighborhood. Yeah, that would be very interesting. I mean, this you is, could potentially see that. Yeah, um, restaurants would probably have no robot rules. You can't bring a robot. <laughs> yeah, leave your robot. Yeah, yeah stand leave your robot something. outside. Your robot standing by the table. Man, the future's gonna be wild. It's gonna be wild. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really unpredictable. Like, uh, I don't think. I mean, you probably have a pretty good sense of it, but I think most people don't understand the wave that's coming. Yeah, and I was kind of kind of completely drown society and change it forever. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, we, we have, a, like I said, it's, it's not like, it's not going to happen like overnight, but it's 20 years from now. I'm like, I think it's still like 20 years from now. I think there's going to be more, more humanoid robots than there are humans. Really? Yes. More humanized. Ro- well, that's so crazy. Like, so that's like more guns. We have more guns than people in America. We'll have more robots than people in America as well. Yes. You have a bunch of old robots nobody wants anymore. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, early early versions or something. Um, in a in a historical timeline, twenty years in the past has not been that big of a deal. You know, I mean, this is a big deal, but you go from like 1900, 1920, not that big of a deal. 1920, 1940, eh, kind of a big deal. 1940, 1960, things start getting weird. 60 to 80, wow, that's a big difference. 80 to 2000, holy shit, now you have the internet. 2000 to 2020, whoa, this is nuts. You have propaganda, social media, YouTube, streaming, 20 years from now like what are we even talking about Mm -hmm. it's going to be that much of a shift like it's all accelerating and we're in the middle of it so it's very difficult to sort of like feel it while it's happening because it kind of just feels like life and you just get adapted to the changes yeah I mean, people's phones at this point are a supercomputer in their pocket, like an article that can answer any questions, and people just take it for granted. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. They get mad if it doesn't work. Yeah. It's like Louis C.K.'s joke about using your phone when you're on a plane. Ah, fucking piece of shit. Like, it's, <laughs> you're in the sky. Okay. <laughs> you're floating in the air. And now it will work with Starlink, too. What's that? It will work with Starlink. The Star- Starlink, yes. the Starlink connection, uh, it'll be like being on the ground. Well, I was telling you how I used Starlink when I was in Utah. I was in the mountains of Utah. There was yeah. no cell phone service anywhere near. And we had full YouTube. We had text yeah. messages, FaceTime, yeah. everything. Phone calls. It was nuts. Yeah. And it was it's this big as that cigar box. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so light. When I brought it out there, like, that's it. Or this is it. Let's yeah. just plug it in. And the guys I was in camp with were like, this is crazy. Yeah. The whole camp was like sharing it. So it was like 10 people yeah. using the, the Wi-Fi signal. Right. It's nuts. Yep. And then, you know, that's the beginning. I mean, you, you, what you're at right now is like what version? This is Starlink Mini, right? So this is like a very small version. How much, how much smaller can it scale down from that? 
Well, th- there's a certain uh, area that you need. Like the bigger the area, the the, is it, the more you can, the more, like like your, your higher band- the bandwidth. Yeah, because you're you're like trying to catch these like photons essentially. So you can think of the like the you know the area of the of of the an, of, of the, the antenna is like the, the more area you have, the more photons you can catch. Um, so. But, but we have a direct to cell capability as well that we're just we're, uh, we've we've been launching that l- will turn on I don't know, probably in a few months um, that that'll actually connect directly to a cell phone unmodified uh, but but because the cell phone is a much worse antenna than a dedicated antenna it'll be about a hundred times less bandwidth but still you know you'll be able to like do text messages you know pictures like medium resolution videos that kind of thing one of the cool things about the new phone the new uh iphone the iphone 16 uh, i got it and i was in the mountains last month and i was text messaging with satellites yeah i messages right and receiving them but just text yeah just text yeah but still pretty impressive yeah yeah i mean what are we what are we going to be looking at 100 years from now i mean when you yeah, right, 100 years from now i hope civilization's around yeah, that'll be a win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are, what are the chances that we fuck this whole thing up? Fifty um, percent. It's hard to say. I mean, um, I guess not. Like, I don't think civilization will be totally destroyed unless there's like some really massive global thermonuclear war. Um, but. Uh, I mean, you know, Stephen Hawking, used, he would say that there was like a one, at least a 1% chance of total annihilation every century. That was his rough estimate. Um, but there's a much bigger chance of civilization being less capable than it is today. So you say like, well, because you look at, say, well, you know, these various civilizations throughout history, um, whether it's the, like ancient Sumerians or the, you know, Egyptians, the... Romans, like they, they, you know, there's like a life cycle to civilization. They reached a peak and then they started subsiding. Um, so, so I think a bigger question is like, will will, will our technology level be better or worse than it is today in a hundred years? Um, I think it's probably going to be better. I, I think, but any estimates are are going to be so. There's so many dependencies. Like, like an estimate, I think is, I'm not, I'm not sure it has any any meaning, because um, it's like there's so many things that can happen in a hundred years. Well, the logical hope is always that people pay attention to history and they recognize the patterns and how civilizations have collapsed. Yeah. And they recognize what's going wrong in the current society and say, we have to do our best to mitigate this. And we've seen this happen before. Let's course correct and let's sort of manage what we've got here now and maintain what we've got here now because it's pretty extraordinary. Yes. This is what we're hoping for with this election. This is what we're hoping for with the future is that people can see we are on a bad path and something can be done right now. And it might be the only moment in history where this is possible because if they do lock the country down and make it so that voting is kind of bullshit and you're yeah. only voting for primaries exactly. and the people that they put in the primaries, they're controlling that in the first place. Yep. You don't really have democracy anymore. You don't really have choice. Exactly. You don't really have freedom. That's right. Yeah, I think freedom is, is fundamentally at stake in the election tomorrow and we'll know. We'll know. I think we'll know by the end of the day tomorrow. I don't think it's going to take. It's not going to be like days after the election. I think we'll know tomorrow. Are you optimistic? I, I am I'm currently optimistic, but... Um, the, the biggest factor here is that men need to vote. That is the biggest issue. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what, what the reason is, but, but men just vote at a much lower rate than women. I think it's like 9%, right? Someone just told me that today. It's a, it's a, it's a big difference. Um, like, and uh, I'm just like saying this is a message to the men out there. Vote like your life depends on it, because I think it does. Vote. Vote tomorrow like your life depends on it. Nothing is more important. I agree. Yeah. Listen, man, thank you for being here. I know you're busy as fuck, so I really appreciate your time. Welcome. And again, I, I thank you so much for buying Twitter because I really do believe that you've changed the course of history. I, I really do think you've, you've created a pathway where people can actually express themselves and actually exchange information that really didn't exist before. And I think it was dangerous. 
it is it is dangerous. Hopefully, I live long enough to see my kids grow up and people on Mars. I, oh. That's <laughs> That'd that's, be cool. That's all, that's all I'm asking for here. I don't uh, think that's too much to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank all you right, very well, much. Appreciate you. Me on. Thank you. All, all right. right. All right. Bye, buddy.